All right, fam. Welcome to the call again. I remember when Brittany Burrell didn't have the money to get involved. Right. This was just back in 2017, August of 2017, when we saw this vision. She didn't have the money to get involved. Um, she sacrificed her, her Georgia Power light bill for something that she didn't 100% know would work out. So it took faith for her to do that. And now to see the results that she's created in her life over the past two and a half years that we've been doing this have just been just ridiculous, right? The, the income that she's made, the impact that she's had, the, the amount of success stories that she's been able to help play a part in creating because of the skill set that she's been able to learn. And one thing I love about Brittany, man, she has simplified the game of trading to a point where anybody can get involved. The only thing that you have to know is Dayday and Kiki. And she's about to go over that. So my sister, Brittany Burrell from another mister, are you on the line? Let me find you so I can get you um, unmuted. So you can bring the same game that you taught me. Let me tell you guys a quick story. Back in December of 2018, I was in San Diego with Brittany. I never forget. I'm in San Diego with Brittany. Brittany, if you don't mind, raise your hand so I can find you. I, I don't see you on here, but I know you're on here. Yeah, I don't see you. But back in back in December of 2018, me and B Burrell was in uh, San Diego, and I'm like, B, how do you trade so simple? Like, what what is it for you? Like, tell me, show me exactly what you do. So me and Brittany sat down for about maybe 20 to 30 minutes in, in, in Geo's crib in San Diego a couple years ago. And um, she began to teach me how she trades, right? So I took exactly what she taught me. So listen to me. This is, a, this is a nugget for you. Everything that she taught me in that 20 to 30 minute session, everything. I didn't, I didn't cut one piece out. I didn't add anything to it. Everything that Brittany Burrell taught me in that 20 to 30 minute session, I applied it when I got back to Atlanta and started trading. A lot of you guys remember the story. When I, took, <laughs> when I took a $400 account to like 4,000 in four days, I did that utilizing the strategy that she taught me, and we've been utilizing that strategy every since. So I'm about to go ahead and make unmute B. Burrell. I'm going to mute them out, but I'm going to unmute B. Burrell. B, you there? Let's go! <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> you are the co-host. You should be good to go. Perfect. What's up? Happy Saturday. Can you see me okay? I was going to use my phone because sometimes it's be acting up, but I think we good. All right, cool. What's up, y'all? Yo, I remember that was just like yesterday. Ria came back and killed the charts with Day Day and Kiki. Day Day and Kiki getting there by the pay, y'all. What's up? I just want to give it back to you, bro. Um, I'm super grateful. Man, y'all give some, drop some love in the chat box for Ria, man. I remember me, him, and Gio signed up, took a picture. I got that picture still the day we signed up, and we all looked like some little, I don't know what we look like. <laughs> we didn't, we, we look like some upcoming millionaires on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the cheap side. But, yo, today, two and a half years later, this guy has supported me every single step of the way, has uh, really, really been my mentor. He's a person I call, and we just bother each other all the time, and I love him so much. He's definitely just been – putting me, pushing me over the edge and pushing me to just get out of my comfort zone and just allow me to just, you know, develop myself and understand who I am and, and that I am capable, right? And that we are one and the same. And I'm super grateful for you, Rod. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. And um, let's get started, guys. So if you're blessed, man, drop some ones in the chat box. Please, please, please drop some ones in the chat box. All right, there we go. There we go. All right, well, let's get rocking to it. I hope y'all, it's super easy to trade. My, my class ain't going to be very, very long. How much time I got, Jones? How much time I got? You got to eat. If you don't use it all, you're good, but you got an hour to flow. Perfect. I need it all. There we go. I'm going to give it all. All right, cool. So um, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, we're going to get started first. I'm going to show you guys how, uh, what it looked like, what the work looked like first. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to show y'all what the work looked like first. This is the 2017 work. All right. These are all the screenshots of my work. I will go through and analyze charts like crazy. The number, if you know me, you know who my mentor is on the charts. If you know who my mentor is on the charts, drop some ones. Drop his name in the chat box. I ain't even got to say it. Drop his name in the chat box. Right. That's right. CD. Again, this is an extraordinary day because to be side by side 
Um, with my personal mentor, Christopher Derrick, guys, it's the only voice I ever listened to. This man has helped me to retire my job. My belief got me there, but the skills, he helped me to obtain those skills. And so they did Kiki birth out of what he uh, created the foundation for me. Guys, all trading is is technical analysis. There's nothing to it but to do it. All right. So let me show y'all what the work looked like. Let me show y'all what we did. All right. So I want y'all to look at the date on this email. This e date on this email is when I did a, a workshop in last summer, I mean, 2018. But look at the dates on these screenshots right here at top, December 2017. All right, December 2017. I just want to show y'all the work because a lot of people say, say that they want freedom. They want time. Keep looking at the dates, all right? Look at the dates, all right? So I just did analysis on so many charts every single day, okay? I would check my, I would make a prediction and I will go back the next day and we'll come back to this so you guys what the work looks like. But so many people say they want success, but they don't want the work. You got to change your language. Stop saying you want the success and start saying you want the work. All right. Y'all drop work in the chat box. We want the work. All right. So perfect. CD will be up at three o'clock today. So y'all stay tuned. All right. So let's get to it, guys. So there are certain components to trading. It's super simple. The first thing you want to understand is five components. All right. Support resistance. Uh, P I call them PRS because different, different educators use different words and breaks and retests, all right? These are the components right here. This is all you need to trade, literally, okay? That's the skill side, that's the 10%. Now, everything else is what's gonna make or break you. This right here is what's gonna cause you to lose all your money, <laughs> all right? This right here was, uh, you know, in, in my position, it was more so overconfident. I might even put that on, let's add another one. Overconfidence uh, is what positioned me to, to learn my lesson, all right? So you guys have to understand uh, what success is. So we're going to go over these components. I just gave it a, a little story name called Dada and Kiki. All right. So y'all hashtag Dada and Kiki in the chat box. I'm going to show y'all what it is. D-A-E-D-A-E-K-E-Y. K-E-Y. Dada and Kiki. Somebody put Didi and Kiki. <laughs> Didi and Kiki. All right, cool. So Dada and Kiki is nothing but support and resistance. So I'm going to break it down for you guys. So uh, we're going to go over the five components. The first component is support. All right. Now I'm going to show you guys how how very detailed I am about looking at support and resistance, okay? So you have support here, okay? For my guest on the line, this is basically uh, what we call, I call it like you're standing in line at a concert, okay? It'll be day-day kiki soon, but I want to simplify it first. So right here, this is you standing in line at a concert. It's just standing on top of the, the sidewalk, okay? You're standing there. You're not breaking through the foundation. We call that support, okay? So that's what we call support here we go make it super simple for y'all now the next thing you're going to see i'm going to go through and label so many different levels of support okay and we're going to make this thing happen guys this 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 right here has helped people to make so much money uh had positioned me me and Riyadh partner last year on a big campaign uh, i was sending trades out to over three thousand people at one point and just with just simply doing this okay so support here all right, now the thick part is called a candlestick. The thick part is called a candlestick. The skinny part is called a wick. Now, anybody ever been to the Dollar Tree and bought some candles? All right, <laughs> these are your candles, all right? The thick part is called the body. The skinny part is called the wick. Let's label another support. I'm putting the first level of support at the edge of the body, okay? Standing on it, standing on it, and this one broke through it. We'll get back to that. Support, okay, it's standing on it, all right? Then we got support again, okay? And we got support again right here, okay? Just keep following my mouse. I don't want y'all to start looking all cross-eyed because you'll know where I'm going with it. Right here at the bottom, this is support, okay? If you got support, drop a one. If you lost in the sauce, drop a two. If you got support, drop a one. If you lost in the sauce, drop a two, all right? It's just right here. Support, support, support. Support is just where these two bodies are meeting and they're causing you to look like you're standing on top of something, okay? So that's support, guys. I'm gonna label some more support. Uh, let's get out of this. Let's come over some more support over, no, that's, let me do that on the upside. All right, cool, let's label some more support. Support, look at the left side of the screen, okay? Support right here, support right here, support right here. Let's bring this down just a little bit, okay? Then we. Give me one second. There we go. Support here. 
I'm just uh, we're just doing labeling right now. Just labeling right now. Support, 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 support. So right now, y'all just leave all your questions at the end because it's going to be answered along the way. I'll leave a little section, a little time for us for questions. Support, support, follow my mouse. It shoots up, it comes down. This little small area, I'm just showing y'all how I look at the market. This is support as well. All right, support, support. This candle broke through this support, okay? Then we come all the way down, we go back up, we come all the way down, then we have support here, then we have support here. The red candlesticks mean down, the green mean up, by the way. Downward movement, upward movement is the green, okay? Then you have um, support right here. All right, goes up, comes back down. Support right here, goes back up, comes back down. Support here, goes up, comes back down. Support here, all right? That's support, guys. I don't have to support you to death, <laughs> okay? Just look at those two candlesticks. Uh, yes, it can be more than two, all right? I'm just trying to go through and just label it for you guys, all right? Um, so those are the support candlesticks, all right? I mean, support, support structure. I'll give y'all one more little spike, little, one more little, let me just find another area. Find one more just random area, just because it's, it's the whole chart is support, support everywhere, all right? Um, let's zoom in here. Okay, support, support, calm down, support. This candle pushes up, calms back down. You got a new level of support right here in the middle. Pushes up, shoots all the way down. Support right here, breaks down. Support right here, breaks down. Support right here, okay? If you got support, drop some ones. If you don't have it, come back later. <laughs> all right, <laughs> drop some ones if you got it. If you don't have it, come back later. All right, so now we're going to do the upside. So that's that's this right here, support. We just knocked out support, okay? We just knocked out support. Now, the next one is resistance. Resistance is also known as a floor, okay? Resistance is also known as a floor. So what I want you guys to see is that, hold on one second. Where is my, oh, here it is. I want you guys to understand this. Uh, support, as far as support goes, it's also known as uh, a floor. A support is no, also known as a floor. Please write that down. Support is also known as a floor. For those who can't hear well, let's put support. <laughs> it is also known as a floor. All right. So boom, that's your first note right there. Okay. Please save all your questions to the end. All right. Save all your questions to the end. Boom. So next, we're going to go over resistance, resistance, resistance. So resistance is just the opposite, guys. Support is on the bottom side. Resistance is on the top side, okay? So resistance came down. I need y'all to play, play close attention, attention here. Came down. Then you have resistance here. Resistance, all right? These two candlesticks to the upside. Now we're focusing on upward movement, okay? Now we're focused on upward movement. So you have resistance here, resistance, resistance. These candlesticks are resisting this line, okay? I don't have to put all these lines on here, but I just want to show you guys how to identify the market. So structure, right now we're just identifying structure. Resistance, I'll bring it all together at the end. Resistance, 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 resistance calms down. Resistance, resistance, calms down. Resistance, resistance, calms down. This is what? Somebody drop in the chat box. What's this right here? Support. That's right. So we have support on the bottom, then it pushes back up. Then we have resistance, resistance, pushes all the way down. Then you have support. This little area right here, somebody's going to miss this. This is also known as resistance. Okay? Boom. So that's resistance, guys. Okay? If you got resistance, drop some ones in the chat box. If you got to come back later, don't drop. If you just drop a two. <laughs> drop some ones in the chat box if you got support. I mean, if you got the resistance, you got the resistance, okay? Resistance is just like somebody's, uh, I mean, it's like somebody's hands are in the air, okay? Anybody ever been in a party, been in the club? Wave your hands in the air like it just don't care, all right? So that is resistance, okay? Two hands up, all right? I know some of y'all probably been hanging out at a, at a party or at a club and you didn't leave, you left a deodorant at home. 
all right? Well, the ceiling is resisting you, okay? Boom, shagalaka. So now we have resistance, resistance. This candlestick breaks up, all right? So we have a new level of resistance here, comes back down, resistance here, comes back down, resistance here, comes back down, and then spikes all the way back up, resistance, resistance, okay? So that's resistance, okay? So let me put this here for you guys. The second component is resistance, AKA is known as a ceiling, okay? Is known as a ceiling. Y'all make sure y'all write that down, okay? We almost done with the two, the, with the two, with the ten percent. <laughs> All right, super simple. This is day day kiki. I'm about to give it to y'all. All right, cool. Now the next component is what I call the breakout. All right, y'all heard y'all drop in the chat box the word breakout for me. Drop in the chat box the word breakout for me. Okay. There we go. Somebody don't know how to spell breakout. Y'all make sure y'all help them out. Make sure y'all help them out now. <laughs> All right, cool. So now um, I'm going to show you guys what 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 is what is the actual breakout? What does that all that mean? Okay. So let's uh, get out of this reset chart and let's just dive in somewhere. Okay. So a breakout is basically something that pushes through support and something that pushes above resistance. Okay. Y'all caught that? Something that pushes above support. I mean, pushes below support and pushes above resistance. So I'm going to make that make sense. So we're going to start back at support. All right, guys. Here we are, support. Here you go. Here's your breakout. So support, you're, right now we're identifying support right here at the neck of the body, at the neck of the candlesticks. Okay. The neck of the candlesticks or like the end of the body. All right. The end of the body is what I'm identifying right now as support. The end of the body, where the thick part is, is what I'm identifying as support. If you understand that, drop a one. If you're still lost in the sauce, we'll, just, we'll find you one day, okay? The, the, end, the, the end of the body, okay? There we go. All right, perfect. So next, <clears throat> let's do this. I'm going to zoom in. So support, 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 support all the way across there. Then look at this. Is this candlestick above or below this pink line? If the body of this candlestick above or is, I'm sorry, did this candlestick stay above the pink line or is it below it? I just want to see who can use their eyes on the day. All right. Did that candlestick stay on top of the line or is it below the line? Perfect. That is called a breakout. Okay. That is called a breakout. This is the breakout candle right here for my people who don't know what we're talking about. Here it is right here. Okay, that's your breakout candle. Make sure y'all write that down. A breakout candle, it breaks out of the, the body. Okay, remember, this is the end of the body. The candle, the breakout, the breakout candle breaks below the edge of the body. The breakout candle breaks below the edge of the body. Okay, guys, cool. Let me show y'all another breakout. I'm just gonna drag this one on down. Okay. I'm gonna drag this one on down. So we had this support breakout candle. Let's find another support level. All right, let's just drag this down, boom. What's this guys, what's this right here? What you got, what you got? What's this right here? Support, okay. Then what happens next is you have the breakout candle right here. I'm talking about broke that thing all the way through, okay? And then let's find another level of support. Support here, okay. Is this the breakout candle, yes or no? Is this the breakout candle, yes or no? Perfect, congratulations, you know how to trade. <laughs> That's the whole thing, because we about to get to it. Y'all ready to get to it, because I'm about to break it down to you, about to show y'all day and kiki. That's all trading is, all right? Y'all owe me a lot of money, because I just showed y'all how much it is, how easy it is in, in two seconds. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right, cool. So this is super, this is a, just an extraordinary blessing to be here with y'all today. I'm super excited to show y'all how easy it is. Y'all ready to meet Dada and Kiki? Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, 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 oh. All right, here we go. So let's bring back Dada and Kiki. All right, so let me give y'all a hashtag for Dada and Kiki. All right, let me give y'all a hashtag for Dada and Kiki. All right, that's the hashtag for Dada and Kiki. I'm about to put y'all on game. 
they didn't kick is nothing but what I just taught y'all support and resistance. But I created this fun analogy uh, that makes it, you know, super easy to always analyze and see it. Okay, so here we go. All right, cool. So here we go. Here we go. But listen, I'm going to show it to you. But you got to go back and apply it. All right, you got to go back and do the work. You got to go back and do your own analysis so you can train your eye. Anybody ever had a job training before? Anybody ever been on the job training? And they made, they made sure that when you're on the job training, what do you have to do? You got to keep repeating the same thing. You got to keep studying what it is that they share with you. All right. I'm about to make it so easy. It's probably going to make y'all feel like it can't be that easy. Okay. It is. The straight, the secret of science to getting rich is doing things a certain way and just following instructions. Okay, that's one that's like one of my top three books. Okay, you have to understand this. Is that simple? Here we go. Boom, Shagalaga. So let's bring it back, bring it back. Not the song. All right, here we go. <laughs> so day day kiki. So day day is red, kiki is green. Write that down. Day day is red, kiki is green. Day day is red, kiki is green. Somebody drop it in the chat box for somebody who missed it. Day day is red. Kiki is green. Okay. Super simple. About to give it to you. Okay. That is red. Kiki is green. Thank you so much, Brittany. Thank you so much. Okay. Now, y'all ever been on a date before? <laughs> Anybody ever been on a date? A bad date. <laughs> if you ever been on a bad date with somebody you may love or somebody that you're just dating or somebody just like a little blind date, Drop a one in the chat box. Matter of fact, drop how you felt on the date. <laughs> drop how you felt on the date. All right? You ever wanted just to just, you know, I don't want to promote violence. That's not what I'm here to do. But you ever want to knock somebody upside the head? All right? It was a bad date. Okay? <laughs> somebody said I should have smoked. Oh, Lord. Okay. Waste of time. So that's the thing we do. Tay said irritated. <laughs> Y'all ever been on a date with somebody that's cheap? Woo! Can't stand no cheap folk. All right, here we go. Boom. So this is Dede Kiki on a date night, y'all, right here in this section, okay? So they cuddle up on the couch. I need y'all to use your imagination because that's how you get rich anyway. You got to use your imagination. Dede Kiki on the date, they, they cuddle up on the couch. They watch Netflix. This is Netflix night. This is also known as the next component. This is called consolidation. All right, consolidation. <laughs> oh, Lord. I ain't spelling this so long. Consolidation. There we go. It's also known as ranging. It's also known as, I'll call it Atlanta traffic as well. But we can call it date night with Kiki and day day. Okay. So it's also known as consolidation. In the trading world, it's known as consolidation. Okay. So make sure y'all write that down. When you see candlesticks not moving up or down, they're just moving left to right. Goodness. They're just moving left to right. This is called consolidation. Okay consolidating. If it's not giving you this downward drop, the drop or the uptrend is the money, okay? When you see this, this is the money, all right? But when you see Dede and Kiki, that's the start of the money. Woo! That's the start of the money, Lord Jesus. All right? Now, some people know me to used to use Fibonacci. I haven't used Fibonacci in over two years now, all right? It's this simple. Let me show you guys. This is the date night. This is the date night. This is the date night. This is the date night, all right? So, boom, shakalaka. Well, let's take that off the screen. So, Day Day and Kiki are having a date night. Now, if you've been one of those people to piss your girl or your guy off, drop a one in the chat box. <laughs> if you were one of those people to push off your girl or your guy, drop a one in the chat box. Let's be honest. Let's be honest, because this is it's super simple. All right? Don't be lying. Some of y'all lying. Some of y'all ain't dropping nothing. Okay? All right? Here we go. This is you right here. You day day. Today you day day. All right. So day day Kiki on the date night. When day day says something out of line, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the structure like this. I'm gonna hide structure. So as long as they're inside this box, they're doing good. Okay. As long as they're inside this box, they're doing good. Well, day day pisses Kiki off, and he got to do what? Boom, leave the house. This is day day right here. Day day, day got to leave the house. Day day leaving the house. Do y'all see day day leaving the house? Yes or no? Day day is the red candlestick. He got to leave. Okay, Kiki says you're not having it. It's time to go. You got to get up out of here. All right. What Martin say? You ain't got. You got to get. You got to get the stepping. All right. 
Boom, shaka laka. That's Day Day. Day Day is leaving the house because he done pissed Kiki off. All right. What has somebody made y'all mad about on a date night before? <laughs> what has somebody made y'all mad on a date night before? Right. What did they do to make you mad? Now, some of y'all be, make sure y'all keep it, keep it PG because some of y'all going to get a little crazy in this chat. Okay. So, boom. See, see, y'all already cutting up. So, they, this is Day Day leaving the house. So, Day Day leaves. I'm going to show y'all how the market moves. The market moves in two angles a lightning bolt. Okay, or in. Now, G GW ain't gonna do that. <laughs> Let me go ahead and make it a little more fun. The market moves in a lightning bolt, or it moves in the end. Now, Ria, forgive me when I say this, but some of y'all, I'm gonna show y'all something. We got like, we got to laugh right quick. We got to laugh right quick. Somebody may see somebody having a baby. <laughs> some of y'all may see somebody having a baby. Okay, that ain't what's going on. Okay, so. <laughs> so this is the deal um we draw a little head on them right just make it fun but anyway the market moves in a lightning bolt or in okay <laughs> so this is what day day is doing let me move that because y'all ain't gonna stop looking at that so this is day day and kiki on the date okay day day and kiki are on a date night so when day day leaves the house what is it that you should do when you piss i'm looking at the wrong I'm looking at my cell phone let me leave this phone when you piss somebody off, what should you do when you've made you to make amends? What should you do to, to, to make it good again? Right? What should you do? That's right. An apology. So here we go. Day Day and Kiki right here. Okay. Day Day is going to leave the house. Okay. Now I need y'all to use your imagination after Day Day leaves the house. Everything after that is him. After that, he leaves the house, everything becomes him. So he leaves the house. Do y'all see him leaving the house right here? This candlestick? That's called the breakout. He left the house. Okay. Now he got to come back and knock on the door. So what we call the knock, this is your next component. This is your next component. We got support, resistance, consolidation, and breakout. The last component, woo, -woo, -woo, -woo. last component is your favorite component. Okay. I'm going to tell you why. When Day Day comes back and knock on that door, baby, you need to get in the trade. All right? Get in the trade. Stop thinking about it. Ain't no number of times to retest. Get in the trade. How do I trade? I tell you when I, you know when Day Day's about to come and knock on the door, just get in the trade. Worst case scenario, you lose one to three percent of your account. So what does that mean? When Day Day leaves the house, ladies and gentlemen, he comes back and knocks on the door right here. Boom, shakalaka. Y'all see that red candlestick right here? Let me let me make it a little bit more specific for my people who can't see. See, okay, right here he came back up and knocked on it. Y'all see this one? Yes or no? This candlestick right here, that wick, it said, "Scoop, scoop." <laughs> All right, he touched the door. So now this is the door. All right, he left the house and he came back and knocked on the door. Now, does Kiki let him in? Is the question. <laughs> Let's Kiki let him in. He comes back and knocks on the door. Okay? Baby, please. Pretty, 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 please let me in. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to respond to that girl on Instagram. <laughs> I didn't mean to, 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 I, I, I told her to stop texting me. Y'all know how y'all be. All right? So this is the deal. Every time Kiki does not open the door, you're making money. Write that down. Every time Kiki don't lay him in above that pink line, the wits can jump all through it. But as long as that body don't come back through it, you're good. So there they leaves the house, there they knocks on the door. And when he knocks on the door, this is called, in the trading world, this is called a retest. Okay? In the trading world, that's called a retest. Let me get the text box. Okay? This is your last component. Okay? Uh, retest in the trading world, aka day day, day day knocking on the door, day day begging. Okay, knock on the door. Okay, y'all stay tuned. We got another level for you, got another level. Okay, boom, shakalaka. So, the retest right here is also known as day day knocking on the door. If you're with me, let me know. If you're with me, let me know. Okay, let me know. <laughs> All right, here we go. So now, you have to understand this. Every time Day Day knocks on the door, ladies and gentlemen, Kiki 
you're making money when Kiki don't let him in. So after this is called the retest. He's knocking on the door. He's knocking on the door. So what begins to happen is she said, uh-uh, you got to go. You got to go. Okay. So how does this make sense? How do you make money off of this? We'll get to that in a second. Okay. But this is all we do, guys. We make an analysis. I literally trade off of my phone, strictly off of my phone now. So I don't really do markups anymore. Everything is in my eyesight. Now, do y'all think y'all can just see Dede and Kiki now? All right. So let me fix this one. This is the first entry right here. Boom. Breakout, retest, take off. Okay. If you follow me thus far, if you, no, don't, don't even drive that. If you lost in the sauce, give me a five on it. If you don't know what in the world I'm talking about, drop a five. All right. Good. When you join, when you join I Am Master Academy, you're going to get all this sauce. <laughs> all right. Because we got your back. Okay. Now, for those who drop the five, it's just, I'm just showing y'all it's a date night. Okay. So let's bring it back. Let's clean it up. Support break day day leaves the house on this candle the body leaves all right comes back so knock on the door and then he leaves again okay what is this is this a lightning bolt or in what's that is that a lightning bolt or in it's so easy y'all somebody gonna drop the wrong one they scared <laughs> i don't know what it is is it a, is it a w is it a v all right so cool that's it that's it y'all so guess what? You got a second entry for my people who don't know how to trade. He came back up again. He knocked. He tried to knock on the door one more time, and then it takes off. But I'm about to show y'all something. I'm about to show y'all something. Who would have loved to have caught this first entry, and this is the second one? Okay. From here to here, you made about 50 pips. From here, if you came back again, from here to here, uh, you caught about 75. So what does that mean for my guests on the line? We can predict when Dede and Kiki is happening all the time, but how does it convert to money? From this here, the, from here, these are, this is what the, the exchange rate costs is on the right side. These are the exchange rates. So 25.51, it dropped all the way down to 27.10. So that's about what we call 40 pips, not 40 cents, 40 pips. So every single pip, I want you to choose a number from one. I want y'all to pick any number you can. Pick a number, okay? I want you to pick how much you would invest into a trade. How much money do you want to invest right now in the opportunity? How much money are we putting on the line? You want to invest a dollar? All right, this ain't Vegas. We know what we're doing around here. We're shooting over at 90%. All right, so would you trust me to multiply your money for you? That's the question, if I'm shooting over 90. So how much money would you give me? How much money would you invest? Not actually give it to me, but how much money would you invest for me to help you multiply it? $5, a dollar, $500. All right, choose your number. I want y'all to think big because there's no cap to what you can have. You guys are cap capping your belief and the, the, the money is not capped. It's your belief that's capped. Boom. So everybody's dropping their number. So from here on the screen, look at the screen from here to here. This was a four, this was a yeah, 50, 20, 27. We'll say 40 pip. So 40 pip, all right, 40 times what you would invest equals the return on your investment in two hours. How much money I made? I want you to multiply the number 40 times what you dropped in the chat box. What was your money? What did you make? All right. Mind you, I did the analysis. Guys, you can get started in this opportunity and don't have to worry about this side. We do all the analysis for you. We get you paid. But for my people who want to learn, not only are you leveraging an expert telling you how to get the bag, but you can learn how to get the bag yourself. So listen, from somebody allow me to do the work for them, Riyadh, they caught 40 pips times their investment. So you could have been asleep. You could have been in the bed. Your phone could have been ran over. I don't care what's going on. When B. Burrell tells you to sell, when I Am Master Academy tells you to sell, you put your money in the market and allow us to do the work for you by doing the analysis and the market is going to move your money into what? Profit. <laughs> All right. Can somebody hit that note? Profit. <laughs> so that's what we have. But guess what? We did it two times in a row. Not only did you catch this drop, we told you to get in again. We told you to get in again. But this time, we didn't catch 40 pips. This time, we're going to catch what? Let's see how far it dropped. Oh, wait. Woo! Woo! 
We should be getting ready to do a pullback now. Oh, Lord, that thing dropping in like it's hot. Let's see. Okay, here we go. So, on the second blue box, from, from the starting point at the top of the blue box, from the top of the blue box, all the way down to the bottom of the blue, blue box, you caught 100 pips. Somebody had a 100 pip day. You really had a 140 pip day in less than four hours. All right? We catching over 100 pips every single day. Easy. Okay? Check this out. Let's change this number. Now you caught a second trade. What did you invest this time? What was your profit? Remember, you don't know this. The expert is doing the work for you. But for my people who want to learn, this is for you. For my people who want to earn, it's still for you. Because all you got to do is just press a button. We're going to tell you when to get in. We're going to do this work for you. Don't worry about this stuff. Somebody drop in the chat box. Don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> we got your back. How do you know? Because I know, baby, two and a half years in the game. That ain't Kiki. I got your back. All right. I'm going to show y'all how you know. I'm about to show y'all how y'all know. Wait a minute. <laughs> chat box just got real big on me. All right. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. So let's erase everything on the chart because I'm about to show y'all something. Here we go. Quick overview. Support, breakout, day day knocks on the door. Okay. This is the funny part. We're going to drag this down to this level. Support. Is it, is day day leaving again right here? This is the second date. Day day and Kiki right here. Did day day leave again? Yes or no? Did they, they leave again? Yes or no? Why is my, hold on guys. My chat box extremely huge. All right. That's right. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Give me one second, guys. There we go. So, if Day Day is leaving the house, what's supposed to happen next? Somebody asked me, how do you know? I'm about to tell you. You gonna know. What happens next? He done pissed off Kiki again. What happens next? He got to come back and knock on the door, y'all. What is the door? What color line is the door? That's it, guys. Oh! Right on the money! Did he knock on the door? Yes or no? Who can see it? Who can see it? Somebody asked me, how do you know? Because you know, I just told you. Somebody just cursed. <laughs> is that is that every time? Break, retest, break, retest. So this is the deal. I asked you guys what was going to happen next before it actually happened. I asked you what, so you know how to predict the market. You know how, to, if you know that is about to come knock on the door, what, are you, what is there to think about? You grab your phone, guess what's gonna happen next? Signal coming. If you don't wanna learn it, I'ma just give it to you. Here you go. Here you go. I know Day Day is going to, I know Day Day about the come, so here's the signal. For my guest on the line, this is what we do for you. We do the analysis. We're gonna tell you when to enter the trade. I'm gonna say enter at this number, 1.27112. I'm gonna tell you when to exit. It's called a take profit. Take profit means Take me out and profit. All right. We do multiple we, we do multiple X's, but we'll say today we did a 50 pip. So either way, 1.27, 26, let's do 2650. So this is the deal. I told you to get in here. I send you, you got an app that you're gonna download called MetaTrader 4. Okay. MetaTrader 4. All right. This is the app. All you need is the app. Download the app. The expert does the analysis and we tell you when to enter and when to exit. You put those numbers in your app. You set, forget, who knows the last word. You set, forget, and what? All right? Set, forget, and what? No, no, no. We can probably, that's the word too. But it's a C word. It rhymes with it. Set, forget, collect. There you go. Guest, traders, I don't know. I don't care who you are. If you don't leverage these products, if you don't leverage these experts, you don't leverage this education, you're missing out on so much money. Guess what? This is the exact same thing I do on HFX. I don't do nothing different. The exact thing. <laughs> Breaks and retakes. Because that's all trading is. So we told you when to enter. 
and we told you when to exit. So let's do this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to give you guys, this is the signal. This is what a signal looks like. All right. Oh, Lord, it's so easy. This is sick. React. Our, do you We sat in the same space. I didn't know a dang thing, and here we are today. Here we are today. This is so crazy. So my guest on the line, my traders on the line, my millionaires on the line, this is what happens. We're going to send you the signal. We're going to tell you in the future, actually it's going to be what we call a sell limit order. All right. Sell limit. Okay, that means something is going to go up and come down. Sell limit means something has to go up. All right, this is where we're at. We're down here. Something has to go up, then come down in the future. We got to get the end. Remember, the market moves like this. All right, so this line is this line. Okay, now I need this line. I need the upward movement. Okay, I need the upward movement. I need this one. Boom. Okay, I need my letter. I need my kneecap. I need my knee. My knee. So boom, this is going to happen next. This is Day Day about to come knock on the door, y'all. Woo! So we, we sent the signal here. We told you to enter here because what is the entry price? Enter the trade here. From here to here, we told you to exit out right at the bottom. So you caught 50 pips without knowing anything or you caught 50 pips because you know that ain't Kiki. It's that simple, guys. Is that simple? All right. So what happens next? Let's take all this off the chart. Let's clean it up. If you're getting some value thus far, drop some drop some emojis in the chat box because I want to show y'all. I want to show y'all Kiki. <laughs> Let me show y'all Kiki. Dad ain't the one up here cutting up too. He ain't the only one. All right. Let's show y'all Kiki. Cool. Now this is the deal. For my people who don't want to learn this, it's okay. You don't have to learn it. We set you, we got you set up for success too. But for my people who want to learn and earn, we got you, we got, we got everything you need. Okay. We're practically like a grocery store. <laughs> okay. We're practically like a grocery store. Okay, cool. So let's get to it. So I'm about to show y'all the sweet spot. No, y'all don't want to throw y'all off on that one. Instinct might throw them off right quick. All right, I need to. What's that signal I sent out yesterday? Uh, G U U K. All right, let's see. Ooh, too easy. All right, so let's look at Kiki real quick. Now y'all gotta flip your mind a little bit. You gotta flip it upside down. Okay. So this is Kiki. Let's start in the middle. Let's start in the middle. Right, start right at the bottom of the trend. Boom, shagalaka. Now, what I'm about to tell y'all next, I hope this don't confuse y'all. For my experienced traders, I need y'all to write this down. My primary support and resistance, get everybody else don't worry about this right now. My primary support and resistance is the edge of the wick. For my, my, my intermediate advanced traders, my primary support and resistance level is the edge of the wick. I call that the doorbell. I'm gonna show you guys something, okay? I'm going to label the doorbell as green. So let's do this. We'll get to that. So does everybody see? Let's do this. Okay. Let's do this. So that day and Kiki on the date. Here we go. Now we at Kiki house. <laughs> I mean, now we at day house. Okay. So do y'all see that day day Kiki on the date? They booed up, right? They booed up. Okay. Yes or no. This is them. They just rolling all over the bed, whatever it is that they doing. Okay. Can y'all see them boot up? Okay. Now, guess who finna piss off? Now, who about, to get, who about to leave the house this time? Now we're going upward. The, remember, the green is up, the red is down. Who's about to, get, who's about to leave the house? Kiki. Let's see if Kiki leave. Boom, shagalaka. Oh, Lord. What Kiki? Fellas, y'all talk to me. What's some things a girl done did to make you mad? What are some things that a girl have done to make you mad? <laughs> huh? <laughs> right? What's some things that a girl has done to make y'all mad? <laughs> right? $15 premium on Snapchat. You need more money. You mad about $15. She need to be mad at you. <laughs> 
not listening, wasting money. There's no such thing as wasting money, man. Get enough money so you can waste it, man. Y'all need to get somebody to drop the signs of getting rich in here. <laughs> level up this thinking, level up this money in here. All right, here we go. Somebody messed up my 2K. <laughs> All right, cool. So Kiki and Day Day Kiki leaves the house. Now, remember that left the other one we showed, the analogy we showed was an N. Okay, this was the one with Day Day. Now we're finna show Kiki. Let me separate them for y'all mind. Y'all mind to be right. Okay. So when Kiki, this is Kiki leaving the house. Okay. What's supposed to happen next, guys? What is Kiki going to do next? She's going to leave and then she has to come back and apologize. So that's right. She has to come back and apologize. Okay. So that's right. So she's leaving. She's pushing up. Now for her to come back and knock on the door, which direction is that? For her to knock on the door, what direction does she have to do? She has to go up or she has to go down? Down. That's right. So let's look what happens. Woo, Kiki real pissed off. Kiki done ran up the street. <laughs> Kiki done ran up the street, y'all. Okay. Remember, this is the breakout candle. We have resistance. Resistance. This is consolidation. Them on a date. Resistance. Breakout candle. And she done broke all the way up. That girl done ran. She done ran and called her girlfriends and all right? Y'all know when a girl is mad, she need to be like, <laughs> they need to make that a dance. All right? So she has to come back and knock on the door. All right? So let me give y'all a, let me give y'all a second though. The neck of the body, remember, this is what we call resistance, y'all. There's still resistance, but I consider that my secondary level of resistance. My primary level of where Kiki is going to come back and touch it's called the wick. The edge of the wick is here. How do I choose which one? Let's get into the academy, Christopher Derrick. Okay. This is the neck. This is the wick. Let me move this red, this white line out of the way. Let me move Kiki out of the way right quick. Oh man. Let's move Kiki. This is the the neck of the body. This is the wick. Neck, wick, neck, wick. If you consider these inside of each other, some people call it a zone. All right, my Instagram is Viberell Music. All right, it's in my uh, box on the uh, tele on the on the on the screen. Okay, so this is the thing. Ah, oh, this is not. Sorry, guys, I'm having a little trouble with my uh, my thing that froze up. Okay, here we go. So, resistance, wick. Both of them are resistance levels, guys, but the edge of the wick is also considered resistance. The wicks are also supporting resistance. Please write that down. Why am I shooting over 90%? I'm telling y'all it's the wicks. Look at the flick of the wick. <laughs> All right, it's the wick. So here's the deal. Kiki is going to come back and knock on, the, knock on the door or she's going to ring the doorbell, okay? So the wick, we're going to add something to our story. The wick is the doorbell. Okay, the wick is the doorbell. The knock on the door is the neck, is the other uh, door. The door is the neck of the body. Okay, doorbell is the green line. Door, the door itself is the pink line. What's the door? Is the door pink or green? I gotta make sure y'all paying attention. Is the door pink or green? There's the door, pink or green. This is the door. This is the bell. This is the door. This is the bell. Okay. Now, sometimes the market, when Kiki leaves or when they they leaves, sometimes they don't want to knock on the door. Sometimes they just want to hit the doorbell. Y'all ever run on people's doorbells and ran off? <laughs> All right, here it is. Let's see what happens. So what happens, guys, is I call out a trade. Okay. I may say buy limit or we're going to do execution. So here we have, here's what happens. Ding dong. Do y'all see Kiki knock hitting the doorbell? Anybody see that? Kiki hitting the doorbell. Right here. That's where you enter the trade at, y'all. Enter the trade. Now me, I don't care from the distance from here. What if it drops down? Listen, it's only... Like a 15 pip drawdown. I don't care about that. All right. 
I don't care about that. You got here and here. Okay? So what happens next, ladies and gentlemen, is that when Kiki knocks on the doorbell, what is that known as? The retest is your entry. Please write that down. The retest is your entry. I don't even really call it a retest no more. <laughs> it's just the entry. If you know Kiki finna come here or here, what is there to think about? The retest is your entry. Oh, Lord. She done took off. She came in right here and she took off. Guess what happened? It's, a, it's another level of resistance. All right. It's always setting up for the next move. You caught the bag from here to here. You caught the bag from here to here. Okay. From here to here was about another 50 pips. So what's happening next, y'all? You got resistance. What Kiki done did again? They didn't even have a whole nother day. They had a whole nother date. What happened next? What's this? Somebody tell me in the chat. It's either two answers. That's right. <laughs> it is Kiki leaving the house. Okay. Or it's called a breakout. Okay. I don't know any candlestick patterns, by the way. I just do that in Kiki. Guess what? She either going to knock on the door, or this is the door, or she's going to hit the doorbell. Let's see what happens. It's already happening. Woo! Too easy. Kiki, breakout, retest it on top of the wick. Retest it on top of the wick. That's your entry. This line right here. Break, enter. <laughs> Break, enter. All right? It's that simple, y'all. All right. She went all the way up, all the way up the whole nother mountain. But that's the simplicity of trading. OK. It's super simple, guys. I mean, it's all over the place. OK. I don't know if y'all can see my screen share, but if you're asking me questions, I think everybody can see the question. <laughs> all right. So, guys, that's Data and Kiki. All right. I'm going to leave the line up for questions. We have about uh, 12 more minutes. <laughs> Okay, 12 more minutes. Data and Kiki, all right? So I'm gonna take 60 seconds and show y'all something. I'm gonna take 60 seconds and show y'all something. 30 seconds on each, all right? It works best for trends, but if you go back and break the market down, you'll see it all over the place. Check this out. Support, Data and Kiki, breakout. Data leaves the house, retest, that's your entry. Entry number one, boom, shaka lock. All right? Let's bring down the support again. All right. Let's bring it to the edge of the wick. Ooh, woo. too much sauce, too much sauce. All right. Support at the neck, support at the wick, support, breakout, day they leaves the house. Boom. Another entry. Another entry. We ain't going to overcomplicate this. Don't y'all overcomplicate it. I notice most people fail because they overthink. Just, just take it as it is. Support. All right, the wick is down here. All right, support. The breakout candle is here. Daddy leaves the house, comes back and retests in his own. That's another entry. You got to go back and break down these markets yourself. You got to get into Christopher Derrick. That's who I listen to. All right, that's who I listened to when I was learning. Let's bring it down again. All right, I'm just break, dragging the same support line down. Support. All right. Support, breakout candle, another entry. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. Guess what? If you know how to trail, GW be trailing everything. We called GU the other day. Oh, Lord. That thing. GU and UK. And listen, this is the funny part. If you just wanted to catch one more, you caught one more trade. Right here. Break, um, break, retest. It came down first before it shot up. All right. It's super simple, guys. That's all trading is. Now let's open up the floor for questions. All right, let me stop sharing my screen. Let's let's do this thing right quick. If you got, hold on, y'all can't get the, the box. Here we go. There we go. What's up, y'all? If it made sense, and if it didn't, still drop some ones in the chat box. All right. If you caught that value today, guys, please let me know. Please let me know. Follow me, Beeper Music on Instagram. I want to open up the line for questions. 
Uh, we can open up the chat. Oh, I mean, we can open, you guys can drop your questions in the chat box. Okay. Uh, what is this in the way? Okay. It's simple, guys. It's just support and resistance. Okay. Support. Give me one second. I can't see my windows. There we go. Support and resistance, guys. Breaks and retests. All trading is, is just technical analysis. It's always support all over the market. I trade the same way on every single market, on every single app, on every single asset. It's I literally just breaks and retests, okay? What you have to do is go through the market and just dissect all five components and bring it together, all right? Identify support. Identify resistance. Identify when Kiki leaves the house. Identify when Daddy leaves the house and go back and see, did they knock on the door or did they ring the doorbell? It's that simple. When you study it enough, it's going to start what? Sinking into your subconscious mind. I literally trade from the bed. I've been trading from the bed for a year and a half now. I send signals from the bed. If I can do it, you can do it. You just have to study it, all right? What I want to show y'all real quick is the work. I stayed in my practice account for six months, okay? That's what I did. Let me share my screen so y'all can see the work. You got to go in and, and I just did what my mentor told me. I did what the academy told me to do. Go and study the charts. Christopher Dare said, go back in time and break down the market. That's what I did. Go back in time. But nobody's willing to put in the work. All right? Look at all these charts. <laughs> all these charts. This is not all of them, by the way. I had uploaded these for a workshop I did. I used to do like 30 to 50 of these a day. Check this out, though. Check this out. I used to make my prediction. Don't worry about my little retest and stuff back then. I didn't know how I would really market up then, but you can tell this is CD because it is blue zones. So wait for the market to retest and then sell. These blue lines is where I predicted it would come to. It came up and I was predicting it would come down. All right, look what happened. It came up and it came down to my first blue level. I did that every day. So when you're asking, how can you know when you study it enough, y'all study people bad habits. When you study somebody doing somebody wrong, you're going to know they're going to keep doing them wrong. <laughs> All right. So let's get to these questions. All right, cool. So, ooh, y'all bombarded me with all these questions. All right, hold on. Let me see. <laughs> Give me one second here. I'm trying to get my, can somebody drop something in the chat box? It's not, it's not refreshing for me. Just drop something so I can catch it. All right, here we go. All right, so, okay, it's not, let me see the questions. All right, here we go, guys. So where do you share signals? I don't. Do you live, <laughs> I'm kidding. So guys, I don't send signals on the IM Mastery platform yet. That is coming, so we're going to manifest that. All right. Uh, do you have live trades? You mean, what do you mean live trades? Do you use H4 frame? Okay, so somebody asked a great question. So for the overall analysis, I look at the daily four hour and I use my entries on the one hour. Daily, I use the daily to see the overall conversation because you don't want to be just riding a tree. You don't want to be keep pressing buy, buy, buy on a good trade all the way up the scale and you don't really know when it's about to end. I look at the daily, just a quick analysis to see the overall trend. I use a four hour to see the trend is currently in and I use a one hour for my entries. All right. I trade indices, uh, futures, everything exactly the same way. All right. Breaks and retests. I caught US 30 the other day, 2,500 pips in an hour. Breaks and retests with Data and Kiki. Okay. Um, daily, four hour and one hour for entries. Daily, four hour and one hour for entries. Okay. And this is the deal. You got to choose your pain. Is marking up charts more painful than going to your job? I tell people I help people have less pain in their life. It's painful to see people broke. It's painful to not see people have freedom. Anybody ever had? No, I don't drop. Now I got to catch up on these questions. When you go live, so can I join your sessions? <laughs> Heck yeah. So do you enter a buy limit, sell limit, entries on the doorbell? Yes, I do limits and I do executions. Most of my trades are executions because I like to get the highest entry. Um, they're about 50 50. I do both. I kind of do one in the same. I'll send a limit and I'll send an execution at the same time. Because remember, it may not come back down and hit the door, but it will hit the wick. So I've had instances where I don't wait for just one or the other. I'll, I'll do both just so you can have that safety and execute. I'm an execution trader. That's more primarily what I do. 
But I also put those limits just in case because that's like the best entry at the peak. But I don't want to miss the trade because I'm waiting for it to possibly. I don't want Day Day Kiki to possibly knock on the door. I want to make sure I'm in that trade. So I always I'm looking for the doorbells. All right. And if I, as soon as I see it hit the doorbell, I'm executing the trade. All right. Um, the trades, the time I trade, by the way, is after 9 a.m. Nine, I usually trade for like, I just send, you know, my trades out between 9 and 10.30. After that, the market tends to start moving a little slower. Um, usually the trades take profit the same. Usually my trade trades take profit within like 15, 20 minutes. Sometimes way less than that. Thank you so much for new to K-Mackers. If you guys want to understand what I studied, 100 series, 200 series, technical analysis, risk for there. That's my whole regimen. Technical analysis is actually what I just taught y'all today. Um, <laughs> that and Kiki. All right, let's see. I'm trying to get to the bottom of this thing. All right. Y'all hold on one second in the chat box. Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to catch up on the, uh, the, the, the questions. Copy and paste. Subscribe to IM Master Academy. We have over 10, comp 10 um, educators that are sending out trades. Uh, killing it. All right. Killing it. Subscribe to I am master Academy, get the elite package elite. We're sending out, we have 10 different people doing that every single day, sending out the trades. They're doing all the work for you. You can leverage your copy and paste system. If you want to learn, you can also leverage our Academy. All right. Get the elite package. That's what I recommend. That's what we put everybody on. Oh, HFX. When I do it, so I do analysis on my MetaTrader 4 and I'm telling them to execute the trades on HFX. I don't like how slow to, um, the app moves because I, I don't, you can't look at the daily and four hour on the app, on the app on the HFX. So I, um, I'm doing analysis on my phone real quick. Uh, but I use my regular analysis, but I will use, I will drop down to a 15 minute frame sometimes for HFX. When I'm holding the trades on HFX, I'm doing like two or three minute holds. What time zone are you in? I'm Eastern time, Atlanta time. So I'm trading at 9 a.m. Eastern, faithfully every morning. <laughs> Instagram, be Burrell music, be Burrell. Can you guys see my picture here on the Zoom? Can y'all see my name? That's that's the Instagram right there in the name. In the, in the left left hand corner, the, right here. <laughs> right there, okay. Um, how do you set your stop loss? Uh, I trade by risk management. The entries are pretty much good to go. So I don't, I really don't, it's the funny part. You can do a 30 pip stop loss. Most of the time it don't hit no stop loss. 30 pips. Yeah, you can do 30 pips stop loss. It'll give you a 3% risk. It, it really never hits a stop loss, so you'll be good on that. 30 pips. I send my signals as a 30 pips stop loss. Um, I get the basis of support, but can you explain more on how to choose and place them? So, Miss Katie, you have to leverage the technical analysis that we have in the Academy. They literally teach exactly what I just taught in Chris Derek and a lot of our other educators that's teaching technicals. Literally just, they'll be able, they're going to break down the structure, and you'll be able to watch those videos on repeat. Did I miss anybody questions? Wait, I saw something up top. How much money do you have to use to start your account when you first started? I ain't have no money, like a couple of hundred, like a hundred dollars or something. That was so long ago, um, probably like a hundred something bucks. When I first was trading, I only traded cryptos. They didn't kiki crypto, they didn't kiki on cryptos for like four months. And then I came back to four rates. Let's see. We got one more minute. <laughs> Let's see. Can you tell your retirement? Yes, I can. Ooh. Where can I get access to recording? You have to ask Riyadh. Um, I Yes, I send out signals on pocket option, but we put them on either Vita Forex or race option. They can do whatever broker they want, but I don't really have to. I don't. I haven't had to do the rollover option yet with my personal experience, but I do recommend Vita Forex for the rollover option because of our educators. We got a seven figure trader, Maddie, that's killing it. I, I suggest Vita Forex for that. Yes, I'm gonna tell my retirement. Ria, can I get two more minutes? Where you from? Hey, go ahead, B. All right, bet. So guys, I gotta just close up the questions. You guys can DM me your questions <laughs> on Instagram and I'll get those answers. Somebody would like me to share the testimonial. So my background is literally, I got started this opportunity August, 2017 guys. Didn't have the money. I can pull up the email of the screenshot. I took a screenshot of my overdraft because we're going to be sharing that on stage when we knock out chairman. So I got inside this opportunity. Didn't have the money because um, I took the money out of my bank account to start the opportunity and got an overdraft on purpose. 
I figured, hell, I believe in myself enough. I'll get the money back. I wasn't worried about that. I lied a candle. It was that I was that desperate because I saw if I work my job for if I work that job the same way every day, I could literally predict what was going to happen next. If I kept doing this activity, nothing in my life was going to change. Clocking in, clocking out, being exhausted, being tired. I said, no, I got to do something different. All right. So what I decided to do, I actually already knew about trading. My best friend Keanu went to a conference or uh, orientation and they were charging $10,000 for a five day course. Hear me again. $10,000 for a five day class. I got a good friend of mine, Bree. She paid $27,000, I think, for a five week course or something like that. Guys, what I am Master Academy is charging us is so ridiculously cheap, inexpensive. So when I got started, it made me nervous that they would raise the price up because it was too cheap. I said, there is no way they're charging $200 to learn a skill set I was about to pay $10,000 for. So I got plugged in. I started taking it serious October 2017. I locked in. I said, I got to hurt and learn how to trade. Because I, y'all know I started rushing how to learn how to trade because I was I couldn't afford it. If it went up above 200 bucks, $200 is an issue. If you can't afford $200, that made me feel some type of way. I felt stupid that I couldn't afford $200. I was like, man, I got to hurt and learn how to trade. So I locked in August, October, 2017. I worked from seven to seven. Um, I went to sleep from 11 to four, no, 11 to 2 a.m. And I was up from two to six every day looking at Christopher Derrick. When I missed his sessions or if he had recordings, I would repeat those recordings over and over. I ain't never been that obsessed about something in my life. All right. And then I look up one day and a hundred days later, I had my first 100% entry day on Bitcoin, walking through Walmart, looking for whiteboards. And I retired April 6th of 2018. I started making enough money. I was like, why am I still going to work? I gave my job a 30, a 90 day notice, y'all. I wasn't sure at first. I said, hey, Jill, I think I might be leaving soon. I, I think I might be leaving soon. Then it started, my language started, uh, Jill, I, I think y'all might need to go ahead and start looking for somebody. Then it started from saying might. I said, Jill, y'all need to look for somebody. All right, stop saying might. And then it went into, why y'all still ain't hiring nobody? I'm leaving in 30 days, you know? And then I had to actually, I pushed my retirement date back because they hired somebody when I was about to exit. So I stayed an extra 30 days to help them. And so it was actually supposed to be March. I don't know if people know that. I stayed an extra 30 days just so people could, so I could help them out. And so that's it, guys. So it's been lovely ever since. Getting ready to retire my mom in the next six months. And I mean, it's just been absolutely amazing. So I'm blessed. Learn the skill set, copy and paste your life away. Whatever that is, you got to do. Guest on the line, listen, you got to choose your pain. If you enjoy, you know, if, if maybe you're not be, maybe you're not broke, but maybe some person who you, you're, you're a slave to your job, nothing wrong with a job, but it's something wrong when you can't enjoy your life. You're not born to work. All right. We're here to make an impact, live your best life, plug in with whoever invited you to this experience on today. I hope y'all had some fun with Dede and Kiki. Follow me on Instagram, be Burrell music. We in this thing, Mr. Jones. Thank you so much. I'm super grateful for you and everybody on this call. I love you guys. Be blessed. Let's go. Y'all already know what time it is. Drop some fire in the chat box for B. Burrell. Drop, let's, let's flood the chat box with fire because she brought it. See, I thought I was playing. See, listen, now here's the thing though. It's not enough to just know what to do. You gotta apply it. That's the secret. You gotta apply it. That's what I told you guys. See, when B. Burrell taught me that same strategy, he taught me that strategy December 2018 in San Diego. And I think we were sitting on a, like a little twin size bed or something in the anointed room. She's teaching me the strategy. She had made crazy money on like AU or something I'm like, yo, B, how did you do that? And then she sat down, she sat me down and, and broke down Day Day and Kiki. I don't think she was calling it Day Day and Kiki back then, but <laughs> nevertheless, she taught me the strategy, guys. And I went back and I applied it and I turned a $400 account to 4,000 in like four days, right? I was real arrogant on the charts after I learned that strategy, right? So I don't urge you to be like how I was, but anywho, nevertheless, B. Burrell, we, we enjoyed it. We loved it. And um, I have no doubt in my mind that there's going to be some people on this call, man, that, that take what you just taught them. They're going to apply it and they're going to see success um, a, as a trader here soon. So with that being said, B, again, we love you. And let's bring up our next trainer. Man, I'm excited for this gentleman. I mean, he is a I am educator. B. Burrell was just talking about plugging into the educators, plugging into, you know, uh, everything that the company provides and the, the fact that we have one of the top educators on the company on the call today is just a, a phenomenal I, I had a chance to watch him train 
uh, a couple couple months ago, we was doing a training together with Justin Owens, and I and I, and I got to watch Abel break down the charts and break down how he trades. And I was like, man, this dude is he's, he's dope. And not only that, he has one of the top products in the company, um, the DeLorean. And I'm sure he'll be breaking breaking that down as well. So let me find my bro Abel, unmute him, and uh, we about to bring Abel up to the line right now. Abel, are you there, bro? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, in the mix, bro. The floor is yours, man. Take it away. I love the shirt. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, my brother. Um, definitely want to just send some gratitude your way, bro. You know, obviously, uh, I appreciate your leadership, bro. I've, I've been learning so much from you just from the business aspect, you know, so it's literally an uh, honor to be able to just provide for your team and provide for, you know, this Super Saturday, bro. And, you know, I got your back whenever you need me, bro. You know, but guys, I got to start this the correct way, baby. If you guys know me, if you guys ever been on any of my sessions, guys, go ahead and blow up the chats with your favorite number, your favorite emoji, right? Because we're about to turn this session up. Um, I have about an hour with you guys. And I'm going to need every little last second of it, guys, because I have a powerful, powerful, power presentation I want to go through, you guys. And I promise you, at the end of this session, you guys are going to have nothing but breakthroughs, right? But I also want to give it back to uh, the first speaker as well, you know, b Music. She absolutely destroyed it. You know, Day Day and Kiki, guys, they could just never get along, you know, but it's absolutely amazing to see how she broke that down, right? Like, like it's the basics of that, guys, and how she interpreted it is what's going to allow you guys to get to the next level. But what I'm about to do is I'm about to also emphasize what she talked about, right? I'm about to go a little bit more in depth, right? Because you can keep things as basic and as simple as that, you know, and you can also go a little bit more in depth, you know, for anybody that wanted more advanced techniques to it, guys. So I'm going to get into that in a second, but I got to set the tone, man. I got to set the Sing tone, million, baby. I got and I set the tone with music, I right? I set the tone with music, guys, right? I don't know about y'all, but music gets me amped up. Uh-huh, listen to the lyrics. Uh-huh. I had to go make we gonna start about two minutes, y'all. Just listen to the song. I seen a milli, I got motivated. Facts, I got motivated. Seen a milli, I got motivated. Hey, I got motivated. Quit my nine to five and now they hate me. Jeez. Used to see all their faces. I had to go make some changes. Now I'm elevated. This is a thin as I'm flipping my way as I'm sipping champagne with no special occasion. From Tyrone and Abel. All right, guys, let's get serious real quick. Like I said, I'm very big on energy, guys. So if you guys are absolutely energetic in the chat, if you guys are absolutely blowing up the chats, guys, it's only going to feel exactly what I provide for you guys, right? So let's get right into this, guys. If you guys don't know who I am, I go by the name of Abel Melendez. I'm 29 years old, guys. I am a father of two kids. Um, I recently got married this past September. And um, for the past four years, guys, four and a half years, I've actually been on this journey. You know, now, before I actually started trading Forex, guys, what was I, right? I was a regular dude. I'm still a regular dude now, but I used to do a regular job like everybody else, right? I used to do warehousing, guys. I was a warehouse worker. Right? I used to do warehousing for a supermarket in upstate New York. Right? So all my job entailed was me picking up boxes and putting it down. Right? Picking up boxes and putting it down, guys. Right? Literally picking up boxes, putting it on a pallet jack, putting it onto the truck, and then sending it away to the store, guys. And I got tired of that. Right? I got completely tired of doing the same exact routine. Right? I got completely tired, guys, of spending 10 hours a day away from my family. Right? While my kids are over here taking their first steps, I'm over here slaving for the man. Right, when my kids are over here taking, you know, speaking their first words, I'm over there slaving because I have to, because I had to provide for them. Right, but that's not life, guys. Right, we need to get to a point where we can enjoy the finer things in life, like watching our kids grow, right? Like watching our, our, our parents, you know, experience things, guys. Right, but we have to make that decision first to get to that point. Right, so many people want to do so many amazing things, but when it's time to actually do it, they start to fail, right? They start to give up. They start to get, you know, they start to get some skepticism in their hearts for some reason. Right, guys, if, if, you're, if you are not in a position that you want to be in life right now, then why are you chilling? Right, if you are not in a position that, you, that you're actually satisfied about, then why are you relaxing? Right, why are you not on Go Live? Why are you not on the academy? Why are you not taking things as serious as possible? Right, because for one, guys, my dad is still working. Right, my dad still has a job to this day. Right, so as long as any of my parents are working, guess what? I'm on the grind. I'm doing whatever it takes so that I can retire them out of that spot. Why? Because they brought me into this world. They gave me life. 
right? So that's the very least that I can do is make sure that I'm looking out for the people that ultimately brought me into this world, guys. So again, if your parents are working today, you have no reason to not be making sure that this, this skill set works, right? You have no reason to not go out there and reach out to a million people so you can hit chairman. You have no reason for it, right? So make that decision. Right, and be dedicated to the grind, not motivated, because motivation comes and goes. You have to be dedicated to the grind in order for you guys to really get ahead. Right, then there's no if, ands, or buts about that, guys. Right, and that's what I did. I seen that I was working a job, spending so much time away from my kids. I seen that my wife was also working a job, spending so much time away from the kids. Right, I seen my parents working every single day, and I made that decision. Right, I made that decision, guys, because again, if, if, if I don't make it, then who's gonna make it for me? Right? I truly feel like I was brought into this world to be the one to break the curses that my family's always had, right? Because I wasn't born, guys, into a wealthy family, right? I was born lower class, middle class, right? So it was my job, right? I put it on my back. I put my family's name, right? The Melendez name, I put that on my back, and I know for a fact that it's my job to go ahead and break those curses, right? Those, those generational curses, guys, of living in poverty, right? Never having money to do anything. Right, having to get hand-me-downs, right? Having to have a, a million people in one house and share one bathroom, right? Things like that, guys, right? We can change all that. We can literally, we all have the power to change it. But who's willing to actually put in the work? Right? That's the issue. Right? So many people talk too much. We're not here to do the talking, guys. Right? The people that are on this call right now hosting these trainings, we're we're not talking. We're putting action behind it. Right? We're not just saying we're gonna do something. We just go and do it, right? We don't say it, we do it, right? There's a difference here, guys. The people that you guys see at either are the top traders, educators, or are the top chairmen, we don't say it, we do it. Too many people are stuck saying it instead of just going ahead and doing it. Why are you keep on saying it for, right? What do you, in my opinion, when you see people bragging about what they're going to do, that's more of an ego thing. Right, because when you're focused and you're dedicated on the grind, you don't care about who, who you're going to talk to. You don't care about broadcasting, you know, to the world exactly what you're about to get into. No, you're going to go ahead and do it. You're going to go ahead and do it. So, guys, be a doer, not a talker, because talk is cheap, right? Talk is cheap, and your talk isn't going to get you anywhere. Your actions is going to get you everywhere, right? I'm on this platform right now. Right in front of somebody that I highly respect, Mr. Riyad Jones, Mr. Chairman 50, Chairman 100 Loading. Right, I'm here now, guys, because of the action that I did, not because of the words I spoke, because of the action that I've been putting in. So make sure you have action behind your words. Right, make sure you have action behind your words. Right, and if you do that, guys, then yeah, you can most definitely go ahead and change the game. So, uh, Mr. Riyad, bro, can you make me co-host so I can share my screen? Because I'm about to go off on that. Right, they already got me too fired up. Right, they already got me too fired up. Oh my God, listen guys, get your notepads, right? Get your pens. If you guys have a notepad handy, put it in the screen. Put it in the camera so I can see who's serious. I see you, Cynthia. There you go, right? Who else? Okay, Raymond, Jimmy, Nia, I see you. Right, who else? O'Shane, Ariel, right? Sharice and Saki, I see you. Kadeen, how are you doing? I see you, right? That's what it's about. Nye, how are you doing, sis? What's good? Yeah, IML drumming, I see you. Yeah, wave that notepad with pride. Because that notepad is going to get you to the money, right? All these notes, guys, that you're about to take is what's going to get you guys to the money, right? That's, that's what we all came here for, right? We all joined this platform to get to the money, right? But if you're not taking notes, you're never going to remember all the sauce that's going to get you there. So make sure you guys are taking notes, right? The note takers are the money makers for a reason, guys, right? I guarantee you every single person that's on this call today, they have notebooks full of notes, right? They have notebooks full of trainings. Notebooks full of, full of sessions and things. I mean, I mean, the first person I was just speaking, guys, she showed you guys literally all the way back from 2017 of her, her, of, of, her, of her actual setups, of her screenshots that she took from 2017. That was three years ago. And she still has full documentation of that. That's why she's seeing the results she's seeing today. It's not because you talk about it. It's because she's documenting those stuff, right? She's writing down everything. Right, you guys seen her schedule? She said she was literally on Christopher Derrick faithfully. Guess what? I was also on Christopher Derrick faithfully when I joined this as well. Guys, right? There's literally a lot of things that we need to do to get to the next level. You just have to make sure that you're willing to do it. Right? So now, let me actually go ahead and share my screen because like I said, I'm about to go in with y'all. Right? So I want to go ahead and talk to you guys about you know, and uh, shout out to my boy, Mr. Tyrone Foster, another educator on the platform. Also, my man, Prescott Coleman, for that song. 
You know, they absolutely made a banger right there. It's absolutely my favorite song, guys. I absolutely play that song during every session that I have, guys. Let's get right into this now, right? So when I look for a setup, guys, there's certain things that I look for, right? There's certain things, guys, because when it comes to trading, you have to be structured, right? You have to be disciplined, right? If you're out here trying to just trade on a limb, right, trying to just take, you know, press buy and sell and hope that the trade plays out in your favor, you're playing yourself. Right? You're never going to have consistency like that, guys. You have to be able to be disciplined, have structure. Right? Once you create that structure and you trust the process, then eventually the results are going to follow. Because right? one thing that you guys have to understand is that trading is like learning how to speak an entirely new language. Right? If, I, if I told you guys right, to speak Chinese, learn how to speak Chinese, do you think you're going to learn how to speak Chinese in a week? Do, do you think you're going to learn how to speak Chinese in a month? Like, be realistic. Do you really think you're going to learn how to be fluent in Chinese in six months? It's not happening, guys. Right? Another way that I like to compare this journey of Forex is think about it as you being a newborn. Right? Anybody under a year of learning this, you're still a newborn. You're still only one year old. One-year-olds can't wipe their butt yet. White-year-olds can barely talk. Right? Some one-year-olds can, yeah, they, they might be able to walk already, but then there's other one-year-olds one that still are barely crawling. Right? You're still a toddler at the end of the game, guys. Right. And, and, I, and I'm saying this to really put things into perspective. Right. Because so many people come into this game and they want to become millionaires overnight. Guys, you have to understand something. Right. The sooner that you realize that an overnight success had years and years of work behind it before they were known as an overnight success. That's when you really can understand how true, how, how hard it is to actually master this. Right. Because overnight success don't really happen overnight. It might seem it on the surface, guys, but there's years and years and years of hard work. Put behind that and that's the same thing you guys have to treat this so if you're less than a year you're only one years old in this game you're a baby you're a toddler right if you're two years old now we got the terrible twos right terrible twos yeah they could walk they could talk but guess what they still destroying everything guys so even in your second year yeah you'll be able to understand these markets yeah you'll see results here and there guys but the, you know the consistency still might be a little shaky right but you're seeing results right and then when you get into your third year, guys, like I said, I'm four and a half years into this game, right? So I'm technically four years old. A four-year-old is still a baby, right? That's why for me, right, no matter what I have as a title, no matter what position I'm in, no matter how much money I end up making through trading, guys, all that is irrelevant because there's people out there that have 20-plus years under their belt that are 20-year-olds, right? That are actual full-grown adults in this trading game, like Mr. Christopher Terry, our CEO, who's done $100 million plus in this game. Right. So there's levels, guys. So we have to make sure that even if we see a couple wins here and there, that we never let our ego get the best of us, because there's always somebody doing far better than you are. And as long as you remember that, you're going to be in this game for a while, guys. So, again, trust the process. It's going to take some time, but it will all be worth it. Right. I'm actually about to get that tatted. Like, I'm not lying. I'm about to get that same tatted. It will all be worth it because that's how we have to approach this. Right. No matter what you go through. It would all be worth it, right? You blew an account, cool. It would all be worth it, right? You lost your downline, right? You lost your entire team, cool. Trust the process because it would all be worth it, right? You just lost your last dollar, cool. Trust the process. It would all be worth it. Guys, I need you guys to blow up the chats with it will all be worth it because you guys have to understand that, right? Because the crazy thing is, guys, we have 550 people on this call and a lot of people are going to completely forget about that saying it would all be worth it, right? Because when times get tough, they're going to fold. When times get tough, they're going to quit. They're going to give up. And that's their fault, right? And just like how DJ Khaled says, we're sorry for your loss if you give up. Why? Because this thing is changing the game, and it's not going to go on you. And we're going to continue impacting the mass guys on a bigger scale. So enough of the rant. I get so passionate in this, guys, because, again, I know what it's done for me, right? And I know what it's done for literally hundreds and hundreds of testimonials that I have, thousands of testimonials that I have. So I know it works because I have so many testimonials. You have to believe in yourself that it works though, right? Because I can't force you to believe it. You have to believe it. You have to make that decision to say, you know what? I'm going to make this work no matter what. I don't want no plan B. I only have a plan A. If my plan B is something, it's to make sure that plan A goes through no matter what. That should be your plan B. It's to make sure that plan A works out no matter what, right? Make this as a do or die, guys, right? Make it as a do or die and then you'll get those do, do or die type of results, guys. And let's actually get into marking up a chart real quick. Right, because again, this right here is going to take what you guys just learned in the first session, right? And it's going to make it a little bit more advanced, right? It's going to show you guys a little bit more uh, of, a, of a, a different perspective, but it all lines up together, right? Because when I'm looking for a setup, guys, I'm looking for four specific things, right? Number one, the first thing I do is I make sure I identify the trend. What is the market direction? 
right? What is the market direction? Are we in an uptrend or are we in a downtrend? Why? Because if we are in an uptrend, we're looking for buys. If we are in a downtrend, we're looking for sells, right? And then we look at number two, guys, which is we locate our key levels of structure, right? You know, like, the, you know, the, the last person, B. Burrell Music, shout out to her again, right? You know, Kiki and, and, and Day Day, what she was just talking about? Those are our key levels of structure, right? Those levels where we can see that the market has reacted from in the past, right? Because the best indicator that we have, guys, is not the RSI, it's not the MACD, it's not FIBS, it's not Stochastics, right? It's not Ichimoku, it's not the Harmonic Scanner. The best indicator that we have is previous price, right? If we look to the left, structure to the left leaves clues, right? And if you're able to find those clues, then you can have a good idea as to what to expect next, guys. So again, number two is we have to make sure that we're locating these levels of structure that make the most sense, right? And then number three, guys, is where is liquidity, right? Liquidity, guys, is another word for money, money, right? Liquidity, money, right? So if we're able to locate areas of liquidity, right, or areas full of money, right? And, and when I say that, I'm talking about, you know, maybe trader stop losses, right? Things like that, right? If we're able to locate areas of liquidity, then we have a good idea as to where the market is going to go. Because the market goes towards liquidity, right? It goes where the money's going, right? It, it locates pockets of money, and the market is eventually going to go in that direction, right? Because the market wants to collect all that money, guys, right? We have a, a market that's doing $6 trillion in a day, right? And it's because, again, we have the banks operating in this market, guys, and the banks, right? They love, they love doing things like that. They want to locate where the best spot to go is, right? And they're going towards the money, right? So if you are able to identify where there's money located, then you have a good idea as to where you expect the money to go or the market to go, right? And then we have number four, because identifying entries, Right, it's proven that entries is the number one reason why most people struggle. Right, so many people focus so much on entry. Well, entries isn't the number one reason. Right, psychology is in your mindset and risk management. Right, but entries is also still very important. So many people focus on entries so much to a point where they're driving themselves crazy. Right, they literally can see their hair turning gray because they're trying to figure out where the best entry is. Guys, there's certain ways that we can use right to make things simple. Right, and I'm going to get into that as well, guys. So now let's get right into what I want to talk about with step number one, guys, right? What is the actual trend? How are we able to identify a trend? And what I'm about to talk to you guys about right now, guys, single-handedly has literally taken my trend to a whole other level, right? The very basic understanding of how to identify a trend has completely changed the game for me, right? Because I'm the most simple trader in the world, right? I, I, I love taking complex ways of trading and breaking it down so the average person can truly understand it. Right, so watch this, guys, right? How do we identify trends? Let's start with the uptrend. As you guys can see, we have something up here that says higher highs and higher lows. All right, I literally talk about this all, this all the time, guys, on my sessions, right? So let's go through it, right? We have swing up, right? We have swing down, right? And then we have a break of structure, right? Whenever I say break of structure, I'm talking about a break of these swing highs or these swing lows that are created, right? So when we have a break of the swing high, we are now in an uptrend. Why? Very simple. We have created a higher low. We followed it with a higher high, right? These are characteristics of an uptrend, right? And then we have push back down for the retest. Going to be looking for another higher low. And then we want to look for another higher high. And as long as the market continues to make these higher lows and these higher highs, then we know that we are in the uptrending market. And when we are in an uptrend in market family, what we have to do is we have to pay attention to these higher lows, right? We pay attention to the higher lows because in a higher low is where we're going to be looking for the next move higher, right? We buy the higher lows, right? We buy the higher lows, guys. We buy these higher lows, okay? What do we buy? Go ahead and throw it in the chat. What is it that we buy? Go ahead and blow up the chat with it. Right, let everybody that's not paying attention know where we look for buys in an uptrend. Why? Because we look for buys from the higher low. Right now, what about downtrend, guys? Well, the downtrend is the opposite, right? We have lower low, lower high, lower low. And this is literally how the market moves, lower high, right? Remember, you know, support and resistance or, you know, I'm just going to keep on using the terminology that you guys just learned, right, with Data and Kiki, right? We have these levels right here, right, that door, right? Look at Every single time we are in a downtrend and we break that low, 
we're creating a lower low, which in return is going to come back up and bring us for that lower high, which we need to look at previous structure to identify where we can stop at. Right? I hope that's mis I hope this makes sense, guys. Right? As long as we are in a downtrend, we look for lower lows and lower highs. Now, what do we do? In a downtrend, we sell the lower highs. Right? In an uptrend, we buy the higher lows. In a downtrend, we sell the lower highs, right? I, I, I'm marking it off as LH, right? We sell the lower highs, family. We sell the lower highs, family, right? I, I hope this is making sense, guys, right? You have to understand this, right? We do not sell at a lower low. You hear me? We do not sell at a lower low. We have to wait for a correction to create a lower high, and then we go ahead and we jump into the sell, right? Now, let me go ahead and just start asking you guys, uh, a few questions real quick, right? I really want to test your guys' knowledge, right? I want to see who's actually been paying attention, right? So let's go ahead and erase this higher, this uptrend side, and I'm going to do the downtrend side as well, right? So if we are in the uptrend, guys, very simple. Let's keep things simple, right? And we know that because we just created a new higher high, right? And say the market does something like this, right? What is our trend right here, right? Go ahead and take your best guess in the chat. Right, if we see something like this, guys, in an uptrend, right, and we see structure doing something like this now, what is our trend? Right, are we still in an uptrend or did that change? Right, are we still in an uptrend or did it change? Right, and let me just highlight something because as much as we would love the market to move in a straight line, it's just not going to work that way. Right, so it's it's not it's just not going to work that way at all. You know, so if we are in an uptrend. We need to make sure, guys, that we are identifying the swing low and the swing lie, right? Because when the market does do things like this, where it's creating lower lows and lower highs, right? And it could confuse people. As long as we make sure we're looking at the bigger picture and the actual swing move, then we should know that eventually we're going to be looking for the continuation regardless, right? Because all of this is a part of the correction, guys. Now, peep this, right? The market does three things, guys, right? We have... Impulse, right? It goes into impulse or an actual trending move, which is classified by the red arrow, right? And after the impulse, impulse, we have a correction, right? Which is pretty much going against that impulsive move or against the trend, right? And then we have a continuation. Continue, how do you spell that? Continuation. Yeah, there you go. Right? And then we have a continuation, right? Impulse, correction, continuation. Right. And we 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 repeat that process until the market eventually shifts, right? Until the market eventually shifts. Guys, let me go ahead and just erase a bunch of this stuff over here on the downside, right? It's the same thing, guys, for the seller's side, right? We cannot lose sight of the last swing move. Why? Because that last swing move is what's truly controlling the market. So if we see something like this in a downtrend, right, where it creates a higher low now, it creates a higher high, creates a higher low, higher high, as long as we stay below, and I'm going to change this color to, let's say, uh, let's go with blue, right? As long as we stay below the highest point of this swing high, then we need to remain looking for the continuation. Why? Because this is the impulse. All of this is the correction, and we're going to be looking for the continuation, right? If this makes sense, guys, drop some sevens in the chat, right? If this makes sense, Drop some sevens in the chat because this is very important, guys, right? Your ability to understand this very simple structure, right, is going to dictate what you guys do next, right? Because I don't care what type of strategy you use. You guys can use harmonics, Elliott Waves, Ichimoku, but I don't care what you guys use. You guys should still have a decent understanding of structure, right, so that you know exactly where you should be trading with, right? If you know we're in a downtrend, then why are you trying to catch buys, right, especially if you're newer? Now, I'm not saying you can't catch counter trend moves. Right, because you can count catch counter trend moves, but if you are brand new to this business, then no, you're gonna have a much higher accuracy weight staying with the trend, right? Staying with the trend, guys. So make sure that we understand this, right? Because this is very, 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 very important right here. Right now, let me go ahead and just ask you guys another question. Right, let me go ahead and erase this whole thing. Right, so say we have something like this, right? Trending market, right, and then the market does something like this, right? And then we do something like this, right? And then something like this. What is our trend? What is our trend here, guys? Are we in an uptrend or are we in a downtrend based off what you guys see? Remember, this is simple. 
right? This is simple. Let's see, uh, the trend is your friend. Yeah, it is, right? The trend is your friend, but guess what, right? Guess what? Momentum is family, right? So it's important to identify the trend, but we also have to be able to identify momentum as well, guys. And that's something I'm gonna talk about in a few, right? But yeah, the, the trend is your friend, but momentum is your family. Why? Because momentum can help you identify when a shift in trend is gonna occur before structure is even broken, guys. Now that's a little bit more advanced, but I'll get into that in a few. I got you guys. Right, but this right here, guys, for this example, we are in a downtrend. Down. Why? Because our last significant swing move was here to here. Right? So everything that occurred in between here to here is technically all a part of the correction. Right? And we need to anticipate the move higher. But once this level right here breaks, this level of structure gets broken, now we can be like, okay, you know what? Structure is broke. Now we're going to have to go ahead and start looking for a shift in trend. Okay? I hope this makes sense, guys. Right? Very, very important for you guys to understand. If you do not understand structure, guys, you're going to have a hard time really understanding how to trade. Right? Now let's go into the next part. Right? How to locate liquidity. Right? How to locate liquidity, guys. Right? Because we already went over what the trend is. Right? Actually, before I get into that, right, I have to talk about key levels of structure. Right? I have to talk about that, right? Because that's number two. That's very important, right? So when we are looking, guys, right? And then we're going to get into liquidity. It's all going to make sense, right? Because when we are looking for key levels of structure, right? How do we do it? Well, let the market tell us where it's at, right? We have a level of structure here now, right? Because the market has paused there before. We have a level of structure here, right? If the market corrects from this level here, then guess what? We have another level of structure here, right? And now how do we identify key levels of structure? Right, well, watch this example right here, guys. Right, say we have the market doing something like this, right? And it keeps coming back to this level right here, right? If we see the market, guys, responding off of a level more times than one, right? Where every time the market gets back to it, then guess what? That's a key level, right? Because if we see the market break it and it holds, then yeah, we should expect a continuation. But even if the market does go ahead and breaks it to the downside and we shift trend, make it green right then that same exact level is where we could expect the market to actually react from in the past or again in the future right and every single time the market comes back up to this level guys no matter what occurs we're also going to still use that level as a level of interest right as a level that makes sense because already in the past guys we have clues right we have clues telling us that that price point right? That zone that the area that the market keeps going towards, we have proof, right? We have clues telling us that we can expect another reaction from it, right? Moving forward, right? So highlight those levels, right? Not just those levels, but also highlight uh, these levels as well, right? Other key levels that make sense, right? Like this is another key level, right? Because even if the market, guess what? Breaks below here, right? Say we do something like this, bounce off of it, and then come lower, guess what we're going to be looking at? the next level of structure, right? The level of structure guy that the market is telling us. We're not just creating these things out of thin air. We're letting the market tell us where these levels are. And then all we need to do as traders is get in the habit of reacting to what these markets are actually doing off of these key levels. Because at the end of the day, guys, trading is all about probabilities, right? We need to understand that, right? We're not gonna win every single trade, it's impossible, right? If you came into this game expecting to be 100% accurate, then, <laughs> I'm sorry to be the one to tell you it's not going to happen, right? So give yourself realistic expectations. We're not going to win every single trade, guys, but following these simple techniques that you're going to learn on this whole Super Saturday, it can definitely give you guys a much bigger advantage to actually be at least maybe 5 out of 10 right, 6 out of 10 right, 7 out of 10 right, right? And then eventually you can even get maybe into 8 out of 10. But I'm going to be real, guys. Being 80% accurate in Forex over a significant amount of time is extremely hard to do. Right, if you have results showing that you're 80 to 90 percent accurate, guys, over a period of a year or two, you can probably bring those results right down to Wall Street and they might just hire you and throw millions of dollars at you. Right, so again, give yourself realistic expectations. I would never say that I'm a 90 percent trader because I'm not. Right, I'm around a 60 to 70 percent trader. Right, 60 to 70 percent. But the difference is here is that I also understand the importance of risk to reward. Right, risk to reward is extremely important, guys. Now, peep this, right. So when we are looking at structure and we are identifying areas that make sense, right? 
we also have to make sure, guys, if we are going to be taking a trade, then it has to follow proper risk reward, right? Because if we're looking at this example right here, right, and just say that we are going to hypothetically go into a downtrend, right, you have to really ask yourself, okay, you know what, we have an obvious level here, or we have a level of structure that a lot of people might be considering taking sales from. What is the risk reward for this level if I were to take this trade, right? Risk reward, guys, is important. Right? If, if an educator is out there, guys, not stressing the importance of risk to reward, then I, I would personally check them. Right? I would personally be like, man, why don't you ever talk about risk management? Why don't you ever talk about risk to reward, man? Like, 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 what are you holding back from me? Are you holding some nuggets from me, guys? Because that's probably what they're doing if they really are seeing results. Because this is very important, guys. So again, if we are in a downtrend, right? I'm going to change the color to blue so we know what era we're looking at. If we are in a downtrend and we are trying to find another sell opportunity, we have to make sure that we are measuring our risk to reward, right? So if I were to hypothetically take a sell from this level, because it is an, a, a level in the past that has shown us that the market will react from, then look at our risk to reward, right? Stop loss goes where? Above the swing high, right? Stop loss goes above the swing high, right? So our stop loss has to be all the way up here, right? But if we're entering here and our first take profit is right back down to these lows, does this look like a risk reward that makes sense for us to take, right? It's not even a one-to-one -one risk reward, guys, right? We're risking 180 pips to go for 100. That just doesn't line up, right? So you have to really under ask yourself, guys, is this level a level that makes sense, not just based off structure, but based off risk reward as well? Right, because anybody that takes this right here, you, you better be 100% accurate if you're going to be taking trades that are less than a one on one. Right, you better be 100% accurate if you're taking trades that are, you know, that are trades that are less than a two to one. Right, I highly recommend every single person that's new on this call to take trades that are at the very least a two to one risk to reward, which means if you are risking 20 pips, guys, you need to be going for 40. Your setup has to show a take profit of 40 pips. If you are risking 50 pips, then your take profit should be 100. If you're risking 100 pips, then your take profit should be 200, right? At the very least, because what that's going to do is that's going to allow you guys to be 50% accurate, 60% accurate, and still be in profit, still be a profitable trader. Right? Because again, risk to reward is a game changer, guys. So I would never take a trade like this because it doesn't follow the risk to rewards. So I wouldn't look at this level right here for an entry. I'm going higher. Right? I'm not looking from there. Although we can see a little reaction off of this level, I'm going to be expecting the market. I would like to see the market go higher. Why? So that we can make the risk to reward make sense. Right? The risk to reward has to make sense. Right, so if we look at a trade and it goes higher now, we're at this next key level, guys. I mean, look at the risk to reward here. Right, this is a far more favorable risk to reward than the one that we just looked at. Right, because now we have that two to one. Right, we're risking 90 to go for 190. Right, we have that two to one risk to reward. Right, which is going to allow us, guys, to take losses but still be in the game. Because again, losses is the only thing that's guaranteed. Right? The only thing that I will guarantee in this trading world is that you will take losses. Right? There's no way around that. You will take losses. Right? I, I need you guys to really tell that to yourself a thousand times because so many people give up because they took a loss or two. That makes no sense. Every trader takes a loss or two. Every trader takes losses. Right? So really tell yourself, I will take a loss. I will not be 100% accurate in this game because it's impossible. Give yourself realistic expectation, guys. Right? Realistic. I mean, treat this like baseball, right? If I wanted to be in the MLBs, right, Major League Baseball, right, what is the average that those professionals, right, what is the average that they're going to hit a baseball out of 10 times, right? A 300% or a 300%, you know, a batting average, right, which says you're hitting three, you're getting on base three out of 10 times, guys, you're an all-star, right? If you can have a 400% average, right, where you're getting on base four out of 10 times, then you're, a, you're not just an all-star, you might end up being the MVP of the league. Right? So treat it like that, guys, right? Those professionals, they know they're not going to get on base 100% of the time. So when they strike out, you think they get upset and they feel like giving up? No. Right? They're going to completely forget about that strikeout. They're going to come up to bat the next time they're up to bat, and they're going to go ahead and they're going to swing for that grand slam. Right? They're going to go to actually go ahead and get on base now because they trust their abilities, right, uh, of being a professional. Same thing here. When you guys take a loss, you have to still trust your ability as a trader, right? Because a loss doesn't define a trader. Right? It's how you respond to the losses that's going to dictate whether you're going to be a profitable trader or not. 
It's how you respond to it. It's not the loss, it's your response to it, right? So make sure that this is important, guys. Make sure we're using proper risk to reward as well and make sure we are able to identify significant key levels where we can expect the market to give us some type of reaction from. Because based off of that reaction, we can move on to the next step, right? So next one, guys, right, is how to locate liquidity, right? This is also very, very important here. Because again, guys, the market itself, right, does certain things to trap traders, right? Now, I hate to be the one to say it, but I'm gonna be real with y'all, right? In a market that does six trillion, if you think that this market is not manipulated in a sense and you're tripping, right, you are absolutely tripping, right? Again, the banks are, are, are rarely gonna take losses, guys, right? And, and who can actually move these markets? We don't have enough money. If every single person on this call, all 500 of us, right, entered 10 standards, it still wouldn't even move this market at all. Why? Because the banks have billions of dollars, right? Trillions of dollars to the advantage, guys. And they're the ones that actually move the markets and they move it in a certain way, right? Now I'm getting a little advanced because I need you guys to really understand this, right? There's a reason why so many people, guys, they will jump into a trade, that trade will get stopped out and the trade will end up going in the direction that they expected it to go. It's because they fell for the trap, right? That was set by the people that are controlling these markets, right? They fell for the trap that the market makers created. Right. I mean, it's happened to me literally thousands of times, guys, where I got stopped out only for me to wake up in the morning and that trade is up 100 pips. And now I'm pissed off trying to figure out what the heck went wrong. That's why this is important right here. Why? Because a lot of the techniques that we are taught, right, those are the same techniques that get manipulated. Right. The same exact ones, guys. Now, it's very important to understand what I'm about to talk to you guys about right now. Very important. Because if you guys can comprehend this concept that I'm about to talk about, it's going to be a game changer. Now, I'm not going to expect you guys to get it right away because it is going to take some time to really get this, guys. But again, a very basic understanding of this, guys, can easily change the game as well. Right? So now, how do we locate areas of liquidity, guys? Well, I want you guys to look at up here, right? The dollar signs shows us examples of where liquidity could be positioned at, right? And the way you guys will look at it, Right? We locate liquidity above structures, market structure patterns like double tops and double bottoms. Right? We locate liquidity above triple tops and triple bottoms. Right? We locate liquidity, guys, in areas where the market right, was, was literally just, uh, just the buyers and the sellers were trying to figure out who was going to take control. Right? Consolidated markets. Right? We locate liquidity, guys, above consolidation and below consolidation because think about it. Right? In periods of consolidation, where the market is either creating these, these patterns, right, or it's just going sideways. Think about how many trades are actually being placed during that period, right? When the market is going sideways, that's when a lot of people start to jump into positions, right? So that's when orders, money, liquidity starts to get built up, right? So here's a couple examples, guys, just to show y'all, right? Now, let me go ahead and just, I want to erase this so I can really show you guys how it's done. Like I said, this is a game changer right here, guys, right? So when we are looking for, say we are in an uptrend, we're looking at this example right here, okay? And let me just go ahead and just draw one last thing real quick, right? Let me just go ahead and do this, bam, right? So say we are in an uptrend, and we are in an uptrend, why? Because we broke previous level of structure, right? We broke this last higher high. So we have higher high, higher low, and now the market is just going sideways, right? And we have created, what is this pattern called right here? Right, go ahead and answer it in the chat if you know. Right, what is this pattern called right here? Right, we have something that's called a double top or a double bottom, I mean, right? Double bottom for the uptrend. Right, now this is the thing, guys. There's nothing wrong with trading double bottoms and double top, but understand that you should be looking for these double tops and these double bottoms in certain areas so you don't get trapped out. Why? Because since this double bottom, guys, was formed before we came back and retested previous structure. Right before we came back and retested previous structure, we have to be able to do, differentiate, guys, whether that's a trap or not. Right, because every single time this market gives us an impulse, we should always expect it to come back to retest previous levels of structure. Right, we should always, always, always expect the market to come back and retest the zone. Right, so if you guys see a double bottom created before it comes back to that level that was broken, right, with the push up then you have to understand, guys, that that is now an area of liquidity, right? There is a lot of money below these double bottoms right here. A lot of money. Why? Because think about it. Everybody that sees a double bottom or a level of structure, 
They have been taught to do something. Whoa, why is it so big? Right? They have been taught, guys, to buy off of these double bottoms, which I'm not saying it's wrong, but if you're going to do it, you have to make sure you have the correct stop loss, right? So if we have something like this, why is it so big? Give me one second. Let me fix this tool real quick. Right? So if we see stuff like this double bottom, guys, and we know that there's potential liquidity below it, right? Now we can at least anticipate something that makes sense for us. Right, so say we have something like this, right? Most people, they're probably gonna enter their trades, you know, they'll have their take profits somewhere in la la land, right? They'll have their stop loss, guys. And again, I'm just talking based on what the average newest trader does, right? They come into this, they have their stop, their targets, you know, somewhere, like I said, in la la land, right? Hoping that it gets there, and they'll put their stop loss directly below these lows, right? They're not gonna put it in the correct spot. Where did I say we need our stop losses to be, family? Right, where should our stop loss go? Right, should it go under the, let's say the A point or should it go under the B point? Right, where should our stop loss go if we are taking this buy based off of this double bottom? Right, and should we put our stop loss below the A or should we put our stop loss below the B? Go ahead and blow up the chats. Let's see, um, A, B, right, I see, a few, I see a bunch of A's, I see a few B's, right? And anybody that's saying B, you're gonna fall for the trap. Right? I'm being real with y'all, right? Anybody that's saying B, you falling for the trap, right? You falling into this level of liquidity, guys, that the market makers are setting for you guys, right? That the banks are creating for you guys, right? We don't put our stop loss directly below where we enter that. No. Why? Because the market can still go ahead and drop and still give us that impulse move to the upside, guys. Why? Because our trending move is this push up. Our stop loss needs to go below the A, not below the B, right? You're getting trapped out if you're doing that. Right, and that's the thing, most people are taught this way, right? Most people are gonna have such a tight stop loss for multiple reasons, right? A few of them being fear of loss, right? Because they don't wanna lose, and if they do take a loss, they wanna have a very minimal loss, right? There's a saying, guys, that I just cannot stand, right? That people say, like, man, I'd rather have a tight stop, man, because if I wanna lose, I wanna lose quick. Yeah, and every single time you're losing, and the trade goes in that same direction you expect, and now how you feel, right? I don't believe in that, guys. I believe in giving the market breathing room. I believe in putting the stop loss in the position to where if it gets hit, it's going to be a complete change of trend anyways, right? If we put the stop loss at the B, then guess what? You can get stopped out and it can still go higher. But if you put it under the A and you get stopped out, then now we had a break of trend, a break of structure. We most likely are going to be trending in the opposite direction, guys. So please do not put it in the wrong spots like what majority of traders do because you're leaving this pocket of money that is going to get eventually ran, right? So I don't take trades, guys, off of these obvious levels. If I see a double bottom being formed and it did not at the very least retest that structure level that was just broken, then guess what? I'm expecting the market to go ahead and run that level. Bam, right? Go ahead and collect all those stop losses from people that fell for the trap, and then guess what's gonna happen? Then it's gonna go ahead and go in the direction that we expected. Like I said, guys, there's a reason why so many of us enter positions we get our stop losses hit and it still goes in the same direction it's because we're falling for those traps right these traps happen all the time literally this is literally how the market runs guys right same thing here right say we have this you know this little flag pattern right flag pattern is a nice little obvious pattern that i absolutely love right guess what we coming back to structure now right a lot of people when they see this same exact scenario set up a buy right? Why does it keep having such a huge thing, right? Set up a buy right here, right? Stop loss is where? Let me go ahead and do this, right? Stop loss is where? Stop loss is directly below where they just entered from because they're scared, right? Because they're greedy, because they're over leveraging, right? They'd rather have a five pip stop loss because they're throwing a standard on a hundred dollar account instead of having an actual 0 0.01 and putting their stop losses in the correct spot so the trade can actually do what it's supposed to do. Guys, there's reasons why people have these stop losses in the wrong spot. Most of the time, like I said, it's fear, right? It's because they're over leveraged, because they're greedy, right? And as long as you do that, I mean, again, <laughs> the market makers are going to continue to have a field day with you, right? They're going to continue taking that money. Why? Because you're setting up for it. Like you're doing things that, are, that you know you should not be doing but yet you're expecting different results. That's the definition of insanity, right? If you continue to do the same exact thing, guys, but yet you're expecting different results, that's the definition of insanity, 
right? So we have to, again, di uh, really analyze exactly what we're doing, figure out the next best case scenario, right? Or at least reanalyze everything and make it make sense, right? So for this example here, guys, what about this, right? Again, most people, I'm just being real here. Trust me, I was one of them. They take an entry off of here because they now see after this flag, a nice little double bottom, you know, they also see a nice little break of structure right here. They're like, oh man, this is lit, right? If your stop loss is here, guys, then again, you can still go ahead and get stopped out. Yes, we're at previous levels of structure, but remember what I said, right? We need to be able to identify, or we need to be able to understand, guys, that the market has all of this move that it can still correct and still go higher, right? That's why for me, guys, at the very least, I want them to come and retest previous structure. But I also understand that there's also still a lot more ways to go that it could still drop if it truly wanted to. So me putting a stop loss directly below my entry just doesn't make sense. We still have to make sure we have the proper stop loss, which will go below this swing low here, right? So even if the market does go ahead and drop lower from this obvious level, we're still safe, right? We're still safe, guys. Again, we're not that we can't expect for our trades to go in our direction, or we can't expect guys to have trades that are going to be no drawdown every single time that we happens, right? Yes, there are other techniques, guys, and when I get into the entries, there's going to be ways to get those crazy entries, right? Wick entries where there's really no drawdown, but we also can't expect that every single trade that we take is going to be in that way, because it's not, right? There's going to be trades where you enter and you're in drawdown for a little bit. It is what it is, if you trust your process and you know how to trade and you, and you trust the ability to read these charts, guys, and you should not be scared about a little bit of drawdown, right? I'm not worried about no drawdown. What do I care about drawdown? Why? Because I know I have my stop loss in the correct spot. I know I identified the trend correctly. I know everything makes sense, right? So I'm just going to let that play out. You have to set it and forget it when you are trading, guys, right? So again, pocket of money below these lows. If that pocket of money gets big enough, guess what? They're going to go ahead and manipulate the markets, go ahead and capture this liquidity, and then shift it, right? Think about it. Look at this, right? That's why I have this up here, right? Accumulation, manipulation, distribution. Why? Because we have, right, we have accumulation, which is when it's going sideways. It's accumulating orders, right? The market is building up a ton of orders, right? We have manipulation, which is when it goes ahead and collects liquidity, right? And then we actually have the next move, distribution, right? Now, there are other ways to do things, guys, but I'm not even going to get on that in this session, right? Because I'll, be, I'll be on here for the next three hours if I had to, right? But listen, very simple. Accumulation. Think about what's going to happen next. They're going to manipulate the markets, and then they'll shift it, right? And the thing is, guys, this is no different than what the person, you know, B. Burrell was talking about in the beginning, right? It's still support and resistance. It's still knowing how to identify the trend. If you know how to identify the trend, then you're good. All this is doing is making it more advanced, showing you guys a little bit more exactly why the market does what it does and why you guys could have potentially been taking losses, right? But yet the trade was still going in the direction that was expected, right? This is that sauce here, guys. So this is in an uptrend, very, very important. I mean, the same exact thing, guys, is in a downtrend as well, right? The market usually does a lot of things the same, guys. And it's up to us to be able to identify the traps that these markets are creating. And if we understand how to avoid those traps, or at least, at the very least, we know exactly where to put our stop loss, guys, we will be in great shape, right? And again, same thing for downtrend, double top, market spikes up higher, collects liquidity, and then shifts, right? Same thing here, right? Came back here, we had another little double top. We know we're in a downtrend. We see this double top, so everybody instantly starts selling, right? We are not going to be selling with everybody else because we see that previous structure wasn't retested yet, right? So we're going to let everybody get stopped out here and we're going to enter where everybody else's stop loss is at, right? And then we'll have our stop loss above swing high and then we'll anticipate the next move, right? If this is making any type of sense to you guys, go ahead and blow up the chat with some sevens, right? Seven, seven, seven in the chat, guys. Because again, this is that game changer knowledge that you guys need to be looking for, right? Trust me, I was very, I was, I was king of market structure, right? Like, I'm very good at identifying structure, guys, identifying trades, knowing where to enter, things like that. But when I started learning this concept right here, and when I started learning this theory and understanding exactly how the markets work, my accuracy went through the roof, right? My accuracy, although I was profitable in the past, right, and I actually, you know, I was able to retire myself before I even learned this, 
this made it so much more better, so much more clearer as why the markets do exactly what they do, right? So this right here is some sauce. Absolutely, absolutely important, guys. I need you guys to really understand that as soon as possible. Right now, let's talk entries real quick. Right, let's talk entries real quick, right? Because I know that that's, that's the next thing. Like, all right, Able Man, like, bro, like, that's, we understand that, bro. But how do we enter? Where do we enter at, bro? Like, what is it that we look for specifically when we're looking for entries, guys? Well, let's, let's, let's think about this again, right? Let's think about this, okay, right? So we have, I'm only going to talk about two different methods, right? There's actually more. You know, we can also talk about imbalances and things like that. But, you know, I just want to talk about these two because these are the ones that I specifically use a lot to find entries with. Right, and there's a, 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 a entry technique, guys, that you find using something that I call, or something that a lot of people call, institutional candles, right? Which again, an institutional candle, guys, is a candle, right, that is caused by the market makers that goes ahead and captures liquidity, right? So remember that the, the, the liquidity, the money sign, right, below the double tops and double bottoms, that last candle that goes ahead and, and ca captures it and hits those stop losses, that's an institutional candle. Right, and that's where you want to enter these trades from, guys. So let's say we have, you know, example like this, right? Where the market itself, you know, we have this nice little structure point, right? And we're looking for a downtrend, right? We're looking for a downtrend. Think about that, guys. We're looking for a downtrend, right? And we have these equal highs, right? Relative equal highs being formed, right? So if we are in a downtrend and we see equal highs, then again, that should automatically tell you, you know what? If we have equal highs here, there's probably a lot of people trying to sell it already off of these highs. So guess what, right? We want to make sure that we are identifying where liquidity is, right? And liquidity could be right above these highs, right? So look at this, is how we play it, guys. So when we do see the market start to shift to capture liquidity, right? This last push up right here is really what we want to focus on because after that push up happens, guys, and if this is going to be a true Right, if this is going to be a true institutional candle, right? Let me actually make. I'm. I want to break this thing up in two candles, right? Just cause, just cause I want to, right? So if this is going to be a true institutional candle type of play, right, that we can use to our advantage, then after price captures liquidity, guess what? We should see a strong reaction from that, right? Like literally, like as soon as the market captures liquidity, spikes up, right, captures that money, and then we shift that's our clue that is telling us guys that okay that is an institutional candle because of how we just reacted from this level and then we need to look for the next best entry now how do we identify the next best entry well if you guys were not able to catch the entry up here at the sniper spot because again you know you could have been able to look at locate something to the left that could have told you you know that it was going to spike up higher and you could have got an entry there but if you missed that entry then guess what right you want to expect the market guys to get back right, towards this last bullish candle, okay, that's a nugget right there, right, you want to make sure that you are entering up from the highest point in this market, the highest point, right, the highest point from this market, guys, so if we see the market do something like this, right, and we see that this candle right here is the candle that captured liquidity, then where should we be entering from, right, right back in that level, Right, so I will be looking just like this, guys. Literally, right? I will have a sell limit. I'm tired of that damn tool. That tool is getting me mad, right? But I'm using I'm using a sell limit, right? Right up in this zone, or you can market execution in as well. You know, if you like to do market execution, you know, I prefer sell limits and buy limits, limit orders, because it's going to get us in exactly where we want to, right? Like literally, it's going to get us in exactly where we want to, right? So we can expect the market to do something like this. Right. And then eventually, typically, when we get back to retest this last candle, guys, since that is the candle that captured all the liquidity, guess what? Then we can most likely see the market really start to go in the direction that we expected. Right. This is literally the most sauciest way to identify entries, in my opinion. Right. And I say in my opinion, because, again, everything trading is opinion based. Right. There's no wrong way to do it. Right, there's absolutely no wrong way to do it, guys. There's thousands of strategies out there that people are profitable off. This is the way I do it. Right, this is the way that allows me guys to get uh, some crazy sniper entries with very, very low risk. Because think about it now, right? If I'm taking a sell from here, right? Oh, I'm gonna have to use this tool. This is annoying having to continue doing this, right? So if I'm gonna take an entry, guys, right from that position, guess where our stop loss is? Right, if we're able to identify in true level 
for a true institutional candle, our risk is going to be absolutely nothing. Why? Because now our risk can go directly above this high, guys, because we don't want the market to go higher, right? Because if it shifts higher, then again, it's just a complete change of trend anyways, right? So we want our stop loss very, very minimal, right? Just above the candlestick, guys. And that's how, uh, you know, I'm able to get some crazy entries with very, very little risk, like very, very little risk, right? So stop loss up here, right? Stop loss directly above that last candlestick, you know, and then targets, obviously, you know, we'll go ahead and look for targets much lower. Typically, you want to find, you know, some more um, areas that have like double bottoms, right? That have potential areas of liquidity to find, you know, those targets, guys. But this right here is some sauce, right? Locate the area of accumulation or locate that double top or double bottom, right? Observe if the market spiked up, collect liquidity before it shifted, because then we have an area that we can really enter from now, right? This is this right here, guys, again, has easily taken my trading to the next level, right? It, it really has. And I actually, I got I to gotta show love where, where love's due. You know, I, I got this, guys, again, from, you know, educators from the platform, right? I didn't learn none of this from anybody outside of this platform. I learned everything that I know, right? A lot of these, these techniques that changed my life, right, from people from the platform, right? I learned from the Trade House team. Shout out to Trade House, right? Shout out to all the Trade House guys, right? I learned from my man Zoe, right? Alonzo, shout out to my man Alonzo, right? One of the most, in my opinion, one of the best educators that's not a go live educator, right? I learned guys from people that, again, right, that, that have, have, have absolutely mastered this way of trading and they broke it down in a sense that absolutely makes sense, guys, right? So I'm learning from people that, again, are from this platform. I don't learn, I don't go no outside source to learn. Why? Well, we have educators here doing it. Right, so everything that you guys need, guys, are literally on the go live platform. You gotta just utilize it, right? So this is technique number one, using an institutional based type entry, right? Now let's go ahead and use the next one, right? Order block. So what is an order block, guys? An order block, let me just draw it out for you guys, right? So say we have the market, again, trending market, right? Just you know, go ahead and accumulating orders, right? And then the market shifts right? Shifts to the downside, okay? And before the market continues, we have a little pause, right, in the market with this little bullish candlestick right here, right? Look at this, right? So we have big drop, broke structure, right? We know we're downtrend. We have an order block that formed because the next candlestick, you know, after the drop, it just chilled in that level, right? And then we had a continuation of the move, right, to the downside, right? This little block right here, guys, this little pause in the markets, right? I'm just going to highlight this year. I can see the price point, right? So in between 91.46 and 91.43, this entire zone right here, right? This is the area that we want the market to get to, or, or this is the area that we call an order block. I mean, right? This is an order block, right? I like to just tell you guys to, again, think of an order block like this, guys, right? If the market dropped aggressively and then just chilled in this range for a little bit period of time, think about it. Right? That means that the buyers and the sellers were trying to fight for control right here. Right? No matter how long it was, right? they were trying to fight for control. And then eventually the sellers just over, overtook it. Right? So how do we play these guys? Right? How do we play these order blocks for entries? Well, very simple. Right? Since this market right here, guys, is probably an area that there was a ton of accumulation, right? a ton of orders being you know, accumulated, right? then yeah, we can expect the market guys to come back to this zone. Let me see, right? Come back up into this level, right? And typically, we will see the market go ahead and start to reject from this zone, right? We will see the market guys start to reject from this level right here. Let me go ahead and just show y'all, right? And if we see the market, the candlestick starting to slow down, then that's a clue, right? That we need to be looking for the continuation of that move. Right, these are order blocks, guys. They literally happen all the time in the markets. Right now, for me, which one do I use more? Right, I love, absolutely love looking the looking for these types of setups over here with the institutional candle-based entries. I love it, right? Because you can get the absolute best entries possible, risking absolutely nothing. Right, but I also take advantage of order blocks, guys, if I see them. Right, order blocks, you can get some nasty rejections from that can really go ahead and play out tremendously. Absolutely tremendously, guys. So let me actually just show you guys an example of that, you know, that um, 
just happened with gold, right? Look at gold, guys, right? So now we're at a live chart, right? This is literally a live chart with gold, right? So first things first, what is the trend? Uptrend. Why? Because we created higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, right? So we know we are in an uptrend. Right now, before we seen the market spike down, think about it, right? In an uptrend, what is the market doing here? Right? It started doing this form of accumulation, right? It started going sideways, started accumulating orders, right? This thing was here, guys, for a damn near a whole day and a half, right? Just chilling. Think about how many orders are placed, right? And think about it, guys. If we know that we're in an uptrend, think about how many buy orders are placed, right? There's probably so many people that seen this little ranging market, they're like, oh man, okay, well, let's take that trade, right? And since it's gold, you know, damn well, they're not gonna have a huge stop loss, right? Cause it's gold, so they're gonna be scared, right? And since it's gold, there's also gonna be those people that, that wanna try to come up, right? They wanna flip that $100 account to a thousand overnight, right? So they're also gonna put a huge stop, a huge, a huge lot size. So yeah, they're gonna have their stop losses very, very tight, right? Very tight stop losses, guys. Right, but again, what is that doing below price? Like, really think about that. Right, what is that doing below price? Right, that is creating that pocket of money. Right, creating that pocket of money that, again, that's what the banks want to go towards. Right, so they're going to go ahead. I mean, you guys seen it already. Look at this. All right, they're enticing buyers, they're enticing more buyers into the market. Right, they want people to continue buying and then they do something like this, this foolery, right? Look at this foolery right here. Right now, everybody that bought gold, they're like, damn, what happened, man? I just lost, what happened, right? Only for the market to then go ahead and do this. Right now, I don't know about y'all, but that's, that's just the most frustrating thing in the world. When you take an entry, it gets stopped out and it still goes back into profit because now if you, if you enter down here, now you up around 100, 200 pips. So I know you're going to be upset if you get stopped out and it just goes right back into our direction. But if we miss that entry, guys, which the entry would have been down at the lowest point, like I always tell you guys, right down to this last level of structure. If you guys can see right here, we had a little double bottom right here, guys, before the market shifted, right? So that could have been an entry, guys. But now what can we do next? Anticipate the next entry, right? We know that we're now going still in an uptrend. So when the market opens this week, what are we going to do? We're going to expect the market to correct. We're going to try to enter at the lowest point of the market again, right? This last institutional candle, this is the last candle right here. Look at this last strong, guys, there's no reason why this very aggressive candle didn't just continue dropping unless it was a manipulation candle, right? So that's the candle we want to look for next. So when we come back down, mark off the entry, 50%, and then we'll go ahead and anticipate to continue to the upside, right? This right here, guys, these very simple four-step process that I just spoke to you guys about right here is game changer. And if you guys literally continue to master this, then it will change the game. And I guarantee you guys, literally, I put my whole life on it because this is literally the one thing, guys, that has completely changed the game for me, right? So if you guys were excited about that, if you guys got some nuggets from this entire thing, guys, this hour went by extremely fast. I felt like I was only talking for like 20 minutes, but you know, if you guys got some nuggets, guys, go ahead and blow up the chats with some 777s. Right, go ahead and blow up the chest with some 777s, guys, because again, this is the information that's gonna get you guys to that seven figure bag that you guys are looking for. Right, this is the information that's not only gonna get you out of your property or, or you out of your situation, but it's also gonna allow you to get your family out of your situation. Guys, yesterday, yesterday, right? Right before we went to the pool, my son is six years old, right? He placed his first trade yesterday. Right, he placed his first trade yesterday at six years old and he made $20. Right, think about how that made me feel as a father. Think about that, right? Seeing my son make money from home, but yeah, we have people that are out there skeptical about it. Nah, right? That's the exact reason why, guys, I, I love this skill set because my kids will never know what being an employee feels like. And there's nothing wrong with that, guys. I'm not, I'm not talking down on people that are employees. I was one as well, right? But the fact that they will be able to make money on their own without having to clock in and clock out, that means the world to me because that's why I do this. I don't do this for the recognition. I don't do this to be able to brag. I don't do this for the quote or title educator. I do this for my family, right? I do this for the people that truly want change, right? I do this for the people that are actually trying to get out of their situation and they're looking for the right information to do just that, right? So I appreciate you guys so much. My brother Riyadh, I appreciate you, bro. You know, I got your guys' back. I got you back whenever you need me, bro. You know, I'm there for you. 
you know, because you're your family now, bro. And anybody that's a part of Riyadh's team, I need you guys to understand. You guys are family. If you guys ever have any questions from me directly, never hesitate to reach out because I owe it to Riyadh because I've learned so much from him. He might not even know it, but I've learned so much from him literally, you know, on this entire journey, guys, because I'm not a marketer. I'm not a network marketer, right? But I'm literally about to hit the next record, Platinum 5000. And, so, and it's, it's based off of a lot of information that I've learned from my man, Riyadh Joe. So, bro, I appreciate you, my brother. Without you, bro, I honestly wouldn't have a lot of more. I, I wouldn't have the guidance that I have in terms of marketing and things like that. So I owe you, bro, and I got your back, man. Woo! That is lit. Let's drop some fire in the chat box for Abel Melendez bringing the value. I'm sitting here in Miami in my hotel room. I'm just about to run around the hotel because he's just giving so much game. And some things I knew, but some of that stuff, I was just, you know, not, not hip on. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys may feel the same way. So, Abel, we appreciate you greatly. My brother, man, I told you guys, every single uh, new trader experience that we do, we're bringing nothing but the value. And he just came with it. Bieber has came with it. And the show continues. The show continues. Now, next up, we got my brother. He was one of the first people that I actually met in the company um, at a major event back in Houston back in 2017. It was me, Bieber, and Gio. We, we drove out to Houston, slept in our car one night. And then the next day, I got to meet Gustavo. When I met Gustavo, he was telling me a story about him uh, used to work at AutoZone and became a top trader in the company, one of the educators, a swipe trader. And uh, yesterday, he just hit the rank of Chairman 25. I saw him down in Miami, uh, down here in Miami at the mall. He showed me his back office and said, bro, it's done. So he's a brand new Chairman 25. He's one of the top traders inside the entire company. And I'm extremely grateful and honored to have Gustavo on the line. So can we drop some fire in the chat, drop some congratulations in the chat. He's a brand, listen, he's a brand new Chairman 25. For those that don't know, he's earning $25,000 a month trading. No income claim, that's just facts. So here's all you guys to think about. He's, he's learned the skill set of trading. He's learned the skill set of building a business. Can you imagine being a, a, a top trader and the company is giving you $25,000 a month to trade you're not even trading with your own money anymore you're trading with 30 bands every month that's not even yours so so take advantage of the complete opportunity that we have right and gustavo somebody that has done it so gustavo you are the co-host you should be able to unmute your line my brother and give us the game that you came to give i appreciate you bro i love you and i'm grateful to have you on the call bro the floor is yours Yo, 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 what's going on? My boy, my boy, man, Riyadh, bro, I appreciate you. I hope everybody can hear me and see me loud and clear. Um, man, I'm blessed and grateful to be here with you guys, man. Um, it's crazy, you know, that event. I remember me and Riyadh Jones, we met and, you know, we kicked it off, you know, good conversation. And seeing his success from where he started to now, I mean, it's, 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 it's mind-blowing, man. Like, I appreciate you for all you do, bro. Literally been following you since day one. Uh, bless and grateful where we're, you know, business partners in this, but first and foremost, bless and grateful to be a brother with you, bro. Bless and grateful to have you in my corner. Uh, and shout out to the boy, Abel Melendez, man. <laughs> you know, the GOAT, always holding it down for the familiar, you know, your trader's favorite trader, man. Shout out to him, yo. Appreciate you, Abel, bro. Um, but yo, man, guys, I I'm blessed and grateful to be here. Um, it was kind of crazy because uh, it was just a last minute thing. Um, I hit up Riyadh and just, you know, Riyadh's my, my brother. I had to told him Happy Father's Day. Um, he was like, yo, let's do, I told him let's do a call. He's like, oh, I got a training this weekend. I was like, say no more. Just send me the fly and let's get it done. And so we're here today. So, guys, I'm blessed and grateful to be here with y'all. Um, I, I was taking, you know, a, a few key notes from my man, Abel. I hope you guys were, were taking notes because I don't know if y'all know. Like, when I met Abel, 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 Abel wasn't making no money trading. And then we went through the trial and tribulations in a year well, almost two years now, profitable trader, top go live educator, platinum 2000, and retired him, himself, his family, beautiful kids, and his wife. So I think that's a blessing at the end of the day. So, guys, me, myself, honestly, I'm going to come here. I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about me. Um, I appreciate you guys also dropping in the chat uh, for congratulating me on Chairman 25, man. Guys, it's a blessing to be um, in this position. It's it's honestly mind-blowing. I, 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 I crack a smile right now because, you know, I remember – you know, coming into this and, 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 and being the trader, right? And I, I'm, I'm going to give you guys this, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of my story. And I'm going to give you guys a training on how to come into this, right? As an individual that can lead from the front, lead from the side and lead from the back, 
without trying to be the best trader in the world, right? Because I'm sure we got those people in the group chat that are like, yo, I'm up 50, 100 pips. They showing screenshots, whoop de whoop. He's the only lit one, but nobody else in the chat is lit, right? So I'm going to show you guys how to not only make yourself lit on the charts, but duplicate that. Because duplication is where it's at at the end of the day. You can't be the only individual in the chat catching pips, making money, making withdrawals. If you're the only one in the chat doing that, that's no, shame on you, right? So I'm going to kick it off, man. I appreciate you guys once again. I see my boy, uh, Mr. Millionaire McCoy on here, bro. Shout out to you, my brother. Appreciate you reaching out to me the other day as well. But guys... You know, my thing, you know, my, my, my whole outlook on, on this concept is, you know, what we're doing is phenomenal. It's, 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 it's revolutionary. It's never been done. It's never been heard before. And you guys need to understand, you're under the, the umbrella of this company that, that has so many different types of resources where you yourself as an individual, right, can really tap in and learn on multiple, multiple different industries. As you guys already know, trading Forex, cryptocurrency, um, you know, even high frequency. I mean, the list goes on. But guys, you know, like I said, my name is Gustavo Alanis. I'm 25 years old, uh, born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, and, you know, thing with me, I dropped out of high school at age 18, right? I just hate being told what to do, how to do it. Um, and dropping out of high school at age 18, you know, it was hard to get a job, let alone, you know, make money. And, you know, like I said, I hate being told what to do and how to do it. And going through multiple jobs, I couldn't keep a, a job longer than 30 days. And, you know, job after job after job, I, I was stuck in a rat race. And I knew, I knew while, while being stuck in a rat race, I was just literally just wasting, in a sense, not my time, but my energy working for somebody else when I could have been putting that time and energy working for myself. So as an individual for me, you know, from down south, I'm just an average kid with above average dreams, right? Average kid with above average dreams. I was broke, busted, and disgusted about almost five years ago. And I took one of the biggest leaps of faith ever that has led me to where I'm at today. So, you know, thing with me, guys, I heard about trading with no resources. I heard about trading with, with no IM, no anything. I heard about trading just about Forex. Oh, Forex takes Forex that, right? went to Google, I went to YouTube, and I was learning and learning and learning. I did it all on my own, and I invested in some courses, and this person, and that mentor, and this, this trader, and that trader. I networked, I got to know this guy, this guy, that guy, and pretty much I learned from so many so many different types of people, and I put it into my own little mix, and guys, I came into I am hitting the ground running because I was already trading, right? So understand, you could do what I do as well. You could do exactly what, I, what, what I've, I'm already doing, what I've done, but understand this is that, you know, when you're trading, right, it puts a lot of stress, a lot of energy. Like, I know people that are, have been <laughs> stressing out for the past maybe 30, 60 days trying to flip a $100 account. Like, look, I came into this, right, making good money. Money was great. You know, I had a group chat with maybe less than, a, maybe less than 50, 70 people. And I was sending out trades and it was cool doing webinars, right? And the thing with me was, as I came into I am being successful in trading, I became the person that my team really depended on. You see, I, I, I knew how to trade and I had the advantage, right? How many of you guys on this, drop an eight in the chat if you really trade, trade. Drop an eight in the chat if you really trade, trade. Because I'm... Like, y'all want to know how to go chairman while trading. And some of y'all guys are like, oh, no, I got to learn trading before I go chairman. I got to learn this before I do that. Look, let me tell you. Let me tell you this. With, with the way I looked at this business, it was like, okay, people join the trader because people want to learn how to what? To trade. Now, this company provides six and seven, eight figure traders, some even nine figure traders that are consistently trading that have done it before, still doing it, but are also documented and proven to be that consistent trader. You see, it's crazy the fact that there's individuals in this company that are even traded that have made more money than me in trading. I'm talking with no pride and no ego right now. There's a trader out there that's making more money than me right now, believe it or not. There's a trader out working you right now that's doing more than you on the charts right now. He's making your earnings, your withdrawals look like peanuts. Same with me. 
<laughs> I'm being real. Everybody's laughing. I'm being real. Because this is the thing. We all know it's the, what, the biggest financial market in the world. So I ask people this. How much of the piece of the pie do you really actually want out of this? Like, how much of the piece of the pie do you want? This is the thing. Do y'all want to trade to look cute and look cool? Or do you want to trade to make money and you can buy yourself the things you want and take care of your people? Because last time I checked, when I've started in this, there's individuals that really got to put food on the table, that really got to provide for their family, that they're the man and the woman of the house, right? So as I came into I Am, nobody knew who Gustavo was, nobody knew what Wealthy Pips, and what happened was I became a swipe trader. Right? I became a swipe trader, started sending out trades, Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna bust out my charts here real quick for a second. Right, I got on swipe trades and started sending out trades. If you're on this call right now and you, and you've taken some of my swipe trades, drop a five 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 in the chat for me right now. Maybe some of y'all have. So this is back to 2017. I say 20 yeah 2017. Okay. Um, a P2K, right? I'm already like not even barely every four, five, six months in. I'm a P2K, right? I'm a swipe trader now. I got a team of a hundred plus, and I'm trading. And as I'm trading, I gotta build the business. I got a prospect. I got to talk to people. I got to market myself. I got to post. I got to do IPAs, income producing activities, right? The way I dumbed it down, right? I'm going to, because I'm going to start typing here. I'm really, like, I'm really, I'm, I'm, this is my boy Riyad. I'm really about to go in for y'all today. The way I dumbed it down, right? And how I got organized to the point where I can build and trade, and trade, right, is that I had to set a game plan. I had to have a set schedule. This is what I do. I trade at night, and I build during the day. Right? Trade at night, and build during the day. Now, as you trade, what, what, what is the set game plan you should have when you trade? I'm going to give you a game plan right now. All right? Number one, when it comes to trading, right, your set game plan. All right? Understand that you need to know what you are trading. Are you trading gold, commodities? Are you trading indices, US 30? Are you trading the foreign, uh, foreign, foreign pairs, the euro, the great British pound, Japanese yen? Right? Are you trading, I don't know, if you're trading HFX, this pertains to all trading. What are you trading? Figure that out. What am I trading? Number two, what time, time, se what, what time, time session, to trade. Okay. What session are you going to trade? You're going to trade New York session or you're going to trade London session? I'm going to be real with you. If, you. if you've been trading all day, every day, throughout the day, you're not going to be successful in trading. I'm, I'm sorry. I got I to gotta, I gotta say it like that because it's like a lot of people think you got to look at your phone and trade New York session all the way to London session and you're gonna be a millionaire trader. No, you're gonna stress yourself out, you're gonna grow gray hairs, and you're gonna just, you're probably gonna quit. Cause that's the thing, you gotta know when to stop, if that makes sense. So when it comes to this trading game plan, figure out what you're trading, what time and what session to trade. And then number three, what are you risking? What is your risk to reward? 
right? What is your risk to reward? You know, it's crazy. A lot of people, they know, oh, I'm about to catch 50 pips. I'm about to catch 100 pips. But they don't even know how, how many pips they're going to risk to catch that 50 to 100 pips. I don't care if, you, you know, you're, you're risking five temps, 10, 10 pips, 15 pips. Yo, I need you to figure out what you're risking before you click buy or sell, before you place any type of order. Why is it that everybody knows how much they're going to gain, but they don't know how much they're going to risk? Right, I heard Abel say, he's like, people play stop losses in places because of what? They're scared. There's a fear. It's true. But some people can't generally even tell you, oh, what's your, like, what's your risk to reward? You know, you like, this is the thing. And this is the thing. It's not about trying to be the best trader, but this is how you know a trader is, is, is actually, he's doing this thing. When you ask an individual his risk to reward ratio, everything's a numbers game. Trading is a numbers game. Building this business is a numbers game. What you're trading, right? The time sets that you're trading, it's all numbers game. Remember, what you're trading through prices, it's all numbers game. So ask yourself this. If you know you want gain, 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 okay, how much are you willing to risk to gain, gain, gain? Never forget that risk factor of what you're willing to risk in order to gain what you want, want to gain. That makes sense? So as you trade, right? Guys, you can either be a, a, a late night trader that trades London or, or early morning trader that trades New York session. I don't know what it is. One thing I learned is that the entrepreneurs that I've met, that I've experienced, that I've studied, they make the most money at nighttime, right? Now, this is the thing. Building during the day, right? I'm not gonna talk much about building because this is a trading call, but honestly, Oh, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Yo, I'm on a call. Hi, hi, let me call you back, yeah, yeah. Call you back. My bad, that was my little niece. I'm not gonna talk about building because this is a trading call, but understand this is the thing. Look, like, you have a lot of time throughout the day, right, to, to, to talk to people, to build this business, to market yourself. Do not get caught up in trading all day, every day. Like, yo, if you're trading New York session, you know, trade your, you know, eight to 10 eight to nine you shouldn't you shouldn't be trading an eight to five <laughs> that makes sense like trading is not a job ladies and gentlemen it becomes a job when you're sitting at your house on your behind and you're just looking at charts all day and then you're like oh man i'm not making no money oh this is getting boring because you're treating it like a job if that makes sense right this is something that's a skill set you see it's special and in order to really get it down pat, in order to really master the skill set, you have to treat it differently. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? Right? So, guys, the three keys, right? Number one, what are you trading? What is the commodity that you're trading? The foreign currency pair, the, the indices. What are you exactly trading, right? How are you trading? Figure out exactly, you know, if you want to trade London session or New York session, right? What actually exactly session do you want to trade in? And last but not least, what are you risking? Your risk to reward factor is very your risk to reward, your R and R, right? And you could be literally as consistent as you could possibly be, guys. So um what I want to do now, um, I don't really want to talk about, you know, I mean, I really want to talk about understanding, you know, the market psychology. Right? That's not the main thing, but understanding um, market structure and understanding that
just like me. All right, family, give us a second. Uh, he should be back here momentarily getting his Wi-Fi right. One second. My bad, y'all. I don't know what just happened, but I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. All right. Let me pull this back up. Appreciate you, Rhea, holding it down for that quick second. All right. So, like I was saying, I like to trade gold, right, because it's a big payout, right? Once you master gold, you could really um, start catching some moves in the market, right? As you guys know right now, let's talk about uh, on what's going on right now around the world, because I'm really, I'm really about to drop game on y'all. Like I said, man, I'm, I'm doing this for my man Riyad. Right, I'm gonna pull up this, uh, um, this website. Some of you guys might know, some of you guys might not know about it. Right, Bloomberg.com. Right, so write it down if you don't have it. Bloomberg.com. This is literally the news that's happening around the world. Right. Look at this right here. Florida cases up 7.8 percent. Miami closed beaches. I'm currently in Miami right now. It's crazy the fact that this virus of what's been going on has been causing the market to go literally berserk, right? You guys look right now at the uh, commodities, looking at oil and then looking at gold, um, you know, the typical trader of understanding base fundamentals, right? Hold on, I don't know why this popped up. The trader that understands basic fundamentals understands when there's a recession, right? When a, a certain economy is set to, 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 in a sense, downtrend, lose in value. You know what's crazy, guys? Once you really educate yourself, when things go like this, when it hits the roof, we as traders, we know what to buy and we know what to sell. What if you could just literally just get into the market and you just, you just know because of the base fundamentals of what's going on around the world told me to get into this certain trade? So let's look, let's look at the commodities, right? You look at oil, right? I don't know if you guys saw oil. I'm going to pull it up right here, right? Big oil... You know, it, it really declined. It hit roughly negative zero. I don't know if you guys understand, but this is history in the making. Look at this. Negative, a negative price level. Where the hell do you get a negative? And look how it hit it to gold silver all these different commodities right you look at these metals you see last year about a year and a half ago i was in i never forget i was in new york and i was buying gold xaususd right at 1400 i'll pull up the weekly chart and i'm going to mark this 1400 level I was buying gold at 1400. I knew, I knew 
that d- d- these moves were going to happen eventually, if that makes sense. I knew for, 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 for the simple fact that, I don't know if you guys know, but with what's going on right now, and I'm just speaking because I'm keeping the roof of my man, Riyadh, believe it or not, even though that there's viruses going out on right there, and I, I hope everybody, you know, they're going through it, you know, we get healthy, we get right, we get through it, and we move on. I just want you to know this. This is just a fact. With what's going with 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 blood on on the streets, there's opportunity in these markets. You see, the world can go down the drain. Buy gold. When the dollar depreciates, where are they investing their money into gold? Investors, liquidity providers. Banks, hedge funds, they're buying gold, they're buying metals. Look how, you look right here, look at this chart, you look at gold. You see that, you see, you see where it's at. All right, you, you see these levels, right? It's, it's at a level right now that's very pivotal. Gold is at 1700 right now. Look at the level we were playing at for the longest between 1400 and 1100 around, yeah, around. Uh, do I have, no, I don't. Okay, I'm gonna just pull this. Uh, Imagine how many people did not see this coming, but the people that saw this were playing within this region, buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling. And you, you see, what I pay attention to is simple stuff. You know, if you trade support and resistance, look, let me tell you something. I've made a lot of money trading support and resistance. I'm not here to overcomplicate you. I'm not here to like, oh, I'm this freaky, you know, crazy trader. No, like, it's simple. It's, 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 it's really something you just need to really educate yourself on. Because as the world goes and havoc and all these massive destructions and this is that and these, 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 these wars and these protests, you don't even know. So as I play with... Look how the market, look how the market, let me delete this real quick. That's why I don't like using this. Check this out. Look how the market reacted off these levels and look how the market came right here to that level, reacted and then took off. Pulled back a little, took off again, then pulled back some more, then really took off again. If you think this, uh, one thing I'm gonna put in y'all's in y'all's head so y'all really understand. If you think you're gonna catch this move right here, like this this buy breaking the liquidity side, breaking these equal highs, y'all got the equal lows, right? If you think you're just gonna catch a buy going all the way up like this. You're out of your mind. Because look what happens. Imagine, okay, you buy here or you buy the resistance. Look how the market gives you what you want, but then it pulls back on you, then it plays with your emotions. And then it ends up flying up, and then it goes in your favor, and then you're lit. You're on top of the world. You're like, yo, I'm on 300, 400 pips on gold right now. Boom, boom, boom. And then it pulls back another three, 400 pips. Now you're not up nothing. Now you're mad because you didn't secure any profits. And then you're just like, oh, all right, I'm done. The market wicks one more time. You're like, oh, I'm done. And then it ends up going all in your favor. It shoots up to the moon. Now what you gonna do? You see, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I'm 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 a little I'm a little tight, right? I'm a little a little mad, right? Because I could be in these certain positions right now. I'm gonna show y'all. All right, I'm gonna delete this. Right. That's my 1400 right i was like i said 
trading gold at 1400 right look at the daily time frame right i was trading here buying it see guys i could be on these on these buys at 1400 and i could be up right now roughly almost what is it, how many pips it's a thousand two thousand three thousand almost four thousand pips Imagine being up 4,000 pips and you still holding a trade. Yo, if you up 4,000 pips on one trade and you up crazy money and you still looking for other trades, you know there's people right now like, there's individuals that are so patient in this market that they know these moves were gonna happen, that they held their trades for months for weeks, what if you what if you could really get into this right here? Like if you could get at fourteen hundred and hold it all the way to seventeen hundred. What if? What lot size would you put? <laughs> so, guys, when there's blood on the streets, there's opportunity. When the dollar starts to depreciate, right? What do we start looking at? The DXY. Where's it at? But yeah, let's not even look at the DXY. Look at the US 30. I want, I want to talk about US 30. Look at this. I marked this up. I marked this up uh, maybe like two weeks ago. Look where the mark was at. My entry was the red line. All right, my entry was the red line up here. The market reacted at my level and dropped roughly almost 2,500 pips. Okay? When there, what I said, remember what I said, when there's Blood on the streets, there's opportunity. Y'all wanna know why I'm mad? Because me, myself, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm, I'm a little mad because I knew this was happening right here. Who's, I'm gonna be honest with you, who on here saw that this collapse was coming? Anybody? Cause I'm gonna be real with y'all. Like I'm just, I'm just trying to be real. This virus caused all of this. The economy to decline. It caused gold to go bullish. It caused oil, right, to go very bearish. So I want y'all to write those down because I want y'all to study those. Once you, once you get down gold, oil, right? The core fundamentals, understanding at the end of the day, how the market moves based on what's going on around the world, trading will become a lot more smoother for you. So, as I'm telling you about gold and what's going on with the, look, if you miss your moves, you miss your moves. Look, I'm, I missed this. When it comes to me, when it comes to trading, what do I specifically look for? I go to whatever looks good. Euro USD, Euro JPY. Let's see. Yeah, look, this is one of the setups I had on EU. And it hit. Look for the sell. Price came up here, right? Gave me that move to the upside. I knew my entry was here, came down. Validated, broke up a little higher, continued down. This is what I do. Break down this chart like this. 
I'm gonna remove all the drawings, right? And this is what I do. I go to the four hour and the daily time frame. That daily time frame is gonna tell me the trend of the market. Right now, in a sense, the market's not giving me a, a sign of where it's either bullish or bearish. How do we figure out exactly when the market's gonna, you know, go into the direction? Well, we look for a breakout. Every single way of the market you look at has a breakout. To the high, to the low, there's a breakout. From up here to here. to hear. The market creates lows and the market creates highs. What I do is when certain levels are broken, right, the, te the market tends to either break, continue, or it breaks and retests. Now, one hour here, I'm on a one hour right now, right? I'm gonna label this as a low right here, down here. Right? See how the market comes down to this level? Rejects, rejects, comes here, rejects, rejects. It never broke the level. All right? Once I see a break of structure, this market broke it, breaking down here. As it goes below this low, I have to look for a break of structure, but a close below a certain price level. I like to pay attention to price all the time. The price right here is 1.11900. Spot on even. So what I'm gonna wait for is for the market on a four hour candle to close below that price level and I'm gonna look for the break and then the what? If you know the answer, drop it in the chat right there. I'm gonna look for the break and then I'm gonna look for the what? Exactly, retest. If the market does not give you a retest, no entry. This is what we're looking for. Break, retest, boom. But if it just if it just takes off, boom, 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 it takes off. Confirmations are very, very key. Look at your candlestick formations. Look at the fact that the certain wicks that are placed within a high or a low, when you see rejection at certain levels, it gives you that confirmation to tell you that, hey, this price level is respected. 1.11900, 1 what, what do you see here? It's what? It's respected. How do you disrespect the market? <laughs> you break it and you retest. You see, I look at it like this. It's kind of like a, you know, you, you want to get over the general, right? The general always speaking, boom, military guy, whatever. If you want to you wanna cross that line, if, you, if you're really looking to cross that line, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna have to go through some back and forth just to go through that, just to pass that line. Because that's the general line. So think about it. You look at this, this setup here, you're like, man, this thing can break off all the way down here. I could catch 100 plus pips, almost 200 pips. But wait, I need confirmations. You see, the market's right here. If, if in a sense, it's co consolidating, right? The market is consolidating, right? Up, downward movement, up, downward movement, right? But as it does this, whether it breaks out to the low or it breaks out to the high, I'm looking for that retest of the structure. This plays as a what? As a resistance. Right? 
guys, it's, 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 it's pretty easy to trade if you ask me, if you stop overcomplicating it. The market creates highs, the market creates lows. Wait for the higher the low to be broken on a higher time frame, on a four hour. Wait for the break. Wait for the retest. You see, it's, this is the thing though. That's just one way of trading. So many different ways of trading. You yourself, believe it or not, I look at it like this. Like I could, I could have caught this, this sell move right here. Yo, somebody's knocking. Enter the door. Up here. Watch this. See how this market look. See how this market right here, from this low to this high. It's a, it's a big area of where the market moved. All right. Even here. Why did the market make the move there and then drastically boom and went down? Why did the market just move up like that then drastically just move down? Look at that. These candles, believe it or not, that you see, I call the up-down candle. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna scale up on this candle. From the low to the high of this candle. Three nine eight hundred. No. One point three nine. Ready yet? Let's do this. Yo, chop. One point. I'm gonna call. So one point one four. Right. I scaled up this 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 candle right here from the low to the high off the fib. I marked it right here between the fifty. That's what I always do. I like to mark the 50 of the fib when I look at these candles. You see, this right here is honestly, it's an institutional candle. The market went to the upside and then drastically went to the downside. What happens is these certain levels here at these price candles, or I mean, at these, yeah, these candles, 1.14, these areas are going to be retested once again. And look how the market does this. Look, look, I'm a market up here, right? I hope you guys are ready, right? And the market tends to do this. Oh, it's not. Wait, 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 wait. All right. The market makes its move down, and then it makes its move down, move up, then it makes it move down, then price eventually moves up to the area, right, of 1.14. As patience blows, look how the market, look how close the market got, and then quickly filled the order of 1.14, and then drastically started doing what? Going down. Why is it that this candle has a certain relationship in this area where the market continue to do what it's doing, right? It continue to do what it's doing. And then look, it went up and then wicked that order. Who here wants to get wick entries? When, I'm talking about when you get in the market and it's automatically already in profit. Look at this risk to reward factor. 1.14. That's just that's the entry. I could risk. Risk 30 pips, 20 pips. And then look how the market gives you that move to the downside. You could have played it off of here, because look. This is a low, this is a low. Uh, you could have caught the sell from up here and then took it down here. Market pulls back and then boom, it breaks the low. Creates a new low. It reacts. It comes back, tests the previous high. Back to the low. And as the market can keep doing this sideways stuff, but Soon as it breaks, boom, break to the upside. Same thing every single time. All right. So, guys, trading, do not overcomplicate it. Don't overcomplicate it. It's simple at the end of the day. Right? I can show you guys a thousand different ways to learn how to trade. But the question for me to you is, do you have your set game plan?
Are you coming correct? Do you know where you're trading, right? Do you know what time sessions you be trading, right? Do you know what you're risking when it comes to the market? You have to know what you're risking when it comes to the market, guys, right? Me, myself, I'm not the best trader in the world, but I've learned and have, have done something now that has helped me, right, be consistent in the market. What I just showed you guys right there with the fib and the 50 guys, it's, it's, it's something that, i am be honest, it's, it's more into detail, more advanced. But if you want to learn more about it, right, go on Go Live. And if you want to learn the, the, that exact strategy, right, finding the breaks and the retests, finding the wig, the wig entries, I want you guys to go watch Jordan Morgan and Zach Hogan. Write that down. Y'all want to get lit at trading? Jordan Morgan and Zachary Hogan, those two are literally, like, literally some of my top mentors when it comes to this. Jordan Morgan and Zach Hogan, guys. They're out there, I believe, in uh, the Forex Advance or the Crypto, right? Because they also, they specialize in crypto, too, guys. These guys are beasts. I'm talking about risking 50 or 100 pips on US 30, catching 1,000 pip moves on live sessions. And like I said, they're on Go Live. I'm, guys, I'm telling you right now, thank me later. Word to my mother. The Trade House, right? And I'm talking about Zach Hogan, right? Zach Hogan and Jordan Morgan. These individuals are teaching you hands-on this exact strategy, right? So I'll challenge y'all. Go watch them. If you get any feedback, hit me up on Instagram. And, you know, I'll maybe, maybe I'll hook you up with a little something, something. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? But, guys, you want to take this skill set serious. They're already making it happen, guys. And trust me, at the end of the day, you can copy and paste any individual in this company, right? It's okay to be a copycat as long as you copy in the right cast. So, yo, I appreciate you guys having me on here today. Riyad, my brother, I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart, my bro. I'm out here in Miami. You should probably live before I leave. But, yo, shout out to every single other educator that has went live. For you guys that are on here, follow me on Instagram at I am Wealthy Pips. I'll drop it right here in the chats, right? Show your boys some love. Give your boys some feedback. And, guys, I appreciate you guys having me once again. And y'all already know I'm going to see y'all at the top or front of top because the bottom is way too crowded. Take it away, uh, Ria. I appreciate you, bro. It's lit. It's lit. Chairman 25, top trader in the company, Mr. Wealthy Pips, Gustavo Alanis. Uh, again, guys, used to work at AutoZone. And now, listen, he used to work at AutoZone. And look at what he's doing today. And Gustavo, real quick, bro, before you, got the, before you got off the line, how long ago was that where you at AutoZone, boss? I was like about, like, what, 2016, so like four years ago, bro. Four years ago, he was just at AutoZone. Think about what you were doing four years ago, three years ago, right? Your life can change as quick as you start to believe, just how he did. So, guys, but the show must continue to go on. Um, actually, the next educator will be our last educator. Chris Dare was supposed to close us out, but he's really, really sick right now. So we are setting up another call for next week or the week after with CD once he feels better. Um, he's really, really down right now. He said he woke up in cold sweat, shivering, all kind of stuff. So keep him uplifted in prayer. Um, but we got, we, got some, we got another special treat for you guys. Justin Starboy signing. Somebody who has, man, literally, since I've been in the company, I've been following them, watching them. We've, we've trained together at different events um, in Atlanta, Houston, things of that sort. And he's somebody, man, who's young, who has his own product, who's killing the charts, and he's, he's, he's experienced in the markets, right? I think he has about maybe three or four years of experience trading, and um, he's really uh, taking everything to another level. And I'm excited to have him on the line. I reached out to him um, last week, and he said, listen, bro, I got you. And uh, it's just it's an honor um, to have Starboy, uh, one of the top traders and educators inside the company, on this line today to close us out. So, Starboy, I'm about to find you, make you co-host, and the floor is yours, my brother. Take it away. You are co-host. All right. Perfect, perfect, perfect. First off, Riyad, bro, I want to appreciate you for uh, inviting me on to this call. And, uh, you know, uh, super excited to be here with you guys. You know, we got 400-plus people on the line. I uh, appreciate y'all taking the time out of your day to be on this. I got a nice little presentation set up for y'all. And uh, we're going to kind of just go ahead and jump right into it. So just give me one sec. I'm just pulling this up. So we're going to do a, a little interactive uh, time on the charts. And then uh, we're also going to go through this slide. So for those of you who don't know, whoops. Pull this up. Give me one sec. 
for those of you who don't know uh, what Steady is, Steady is a swing trading scanner uh, here at I Am Mastery Academy that uh, myself and Mr. John Dollary, uh, you know, co-created. When it comes down to Steady, what it is, it's 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 swing trades with high accuracy. Uh, it's swing trades with very high risk to reward ratios, right? Uh, so when it comes down to it, guys, uh, you know, myself and John, we go live. Uh, I go live on Sundays and Wednesdays. John go lives Tuesdays and Thursdays. Some of these slides are a little dated. You know, we've added new traders. We have Spanish educators now as well. Uh, if you guys have any Spanish individuals on your team, we have Mr. Relis Rodriguez. Uh, she's a beast. We have Mr. Mauricio as well. He's also a beast. Um, getting access to Steady is very simple, guys. All you got to do is log into IM Center. Um, and then from there, you're going to click on the strategies tab on the bottom left. From there, you'll click on steady, click this little logo, and then you're in. Um, within steady, I'll go over the back end and how it works as well. But um, it, it's simply just alerts, right? You're going to get trade alerts sent uh, to your phone via Telegram. Um, I'll drop the, the, the Telegram in the chat here in a little bit as well. Uh, but how it works is you get a notification when there's a new trade idea, new market idea, new market outlook, whatever you want to say. And uh, from there, uh, the scanner will pretty much just give you the information onto the right-hand side, whether it's a sell limit or buy limit, the entry, TP stops, all that information. And then from there, all you got to do is just kind of sit and wait. Uh, but, you know, when it comes down to the actual steady software, uh, you know, there's not really much to it, right? Uh, it's more so about learning the strategy. I'll pull this up real quick. It's more so about actually learning the strategy because we can log into – steady.im real quick and uh like i said guys you know there's really not much to the actual scanner right uh, you know there's an alert panel when there's new trades you can see what's currently active what's currently pending which you could potentially place as a pending order and what's closed right uh, there is steady and then steady swift and i'll break down what steady swift is here in a little bit as well and then uh, on top of that, the last thing is uh, just the go live sessions, right? When it comes down to the go live sessions, guys, I'm going to log in and show you those real quick. Um, if you log, if you scroll down into strategy education, and then you click on steady, uh, you have myself Sundays and Wednesdays, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. You have uh, John Dollary, 5 p.m. Eastern, Monday and Thursdays. And you got Mr. Mauricio, Tuesdays through Wednesdays. Uh, and that's going to be in English. And then we also have it in Spanish as well. You can just go on to uh, Spanish, go live and see those. But when it comes down to uh, steady, you know, truthfully, it's not even really about the scanner. It's more so about the education because what we're teaching you guys on steady is how to, uh, you know, get very low risk and high reward trade setups. Right. Um, and I'm going to be breaking down a few different things that will really take your trading to a whole nother level. So, I would just say focus in. If you got a notebook, uh, if you're taking notes, I would say definitely take notes. Here's an intro to the strategy. So the first thing is, is you got to understand the trend, right? You got to understand what what an uptrend, downtrend, and sideways market truly are. Um, you need to learn uh, how to identify the structure in each of these market conditions, right? So that's step one. So you got to learn. Uh, do we have any Portuguese speaking sessions on go live? Uh, I'm not sure you can, uh, you can check it out. Here's the, uh, SD slash here is, uh, cool. So we have the uptrend when it comes down to an uptrending market, you can see it's going up, but you gotta just, you know, really understand what are the key points in the trend. Uh, so, you know, you need to know what each one of these arrowed points are and you know, what, you, what uh, all these circled areas are called as well. Um, when it comes down to an uptrend, you got higher lows and higher highs, right? The reason these points are called higher highs and higher lows is very simple. And all you got to do as a trader is understand that, you know, the reason why this is called a, a higher high is because this is a high and it's higher than this previous high. This is a high, it's higher than the previous high. Um, when it comes down to these higher low points, all you got to understand is this is a low point, but it's higher than this previous low point. This is a low point, it's higher than this previous low point, right? So when it comes down to it, you know, you learning how to trade, you're going to learn from so many different people. You're going to hear so many different things. Uh, what you got to really understand is that basic Forex education is out there to, uh, it's for you to blindly follow, right? So factor this in, um, you know, us as human beings, we usually, we'll, we'll usually just follow what somebody says, not based on our opinion, but kind of just based on theirs. You know, like, let's say your friend Joe says, oh, I don't like this guy. 
more than likely you probably won't like them either just because Joe said that, right? So when it comes down to trading, trading is kind of similar. You know, we learn about basic patterns, double tops, double bottoms, head and shoulders, all these other things. Um, and people tell you those are the biggest patterns in the Forex market. I'm here to tell you that is 100% false. The biggest patterns are the trend. So understanding price goes from a higher low to a higher high to a higher low to a higher high to a higher low to a higher high and an uptrend. That's one of the biggest patterns when it comes down to trading. The second biggest pattern is understanding what these legs are called, right? Now we have impulsive moves and pullbacks or retracements, whatever you want to call it. Impulse, pullback, impulse, pullback right? Uh, when you guys are trading, you want to be in these impulsive movements because this is where the money and, and the liquidity and the volume truly lies is the in impulsive moves, right? Uh, perfect, perfect, perfect. So uh, the, second, the first biggest pattern is understanding what trend you're in. So when you're in an uptrend, you need to understand that goes from the, the higher low to the higher high. The next thing is it's always going to go impulse, pullback, impulse, pullback, impulse, pullback, right? So what happens is uh, in an uptrend, you only want to take buying positions in an uptrend. You want to buy off these higher low points, right? This is the safest place for you to actually come into the market and get an entry, right? Um, so one thing Christopher Terry taught me back in like 2016, 2017 was this. He said measured moves. The market will move in equal swings and pullbacks. So what that really means is he said this. I circled these impulses in green. He said, if this was about 150 pip move, he said the following impulse should be about 150 pips too. So if this was about 150, he said nine times out of 10, the next one's going to be about 150 and the next one's going to be about 150. He also said this, he said the pullbacks work the same way. If this pullback was 40 pips, he said nine times out of 10, the next one might be about 40 pips. And then this is how you start mapping out the trend. If you know the pullbacks are about, you know, 40 pips, then, you know, on the next slide, what we'll be able to see is that we can actually measure these pullbacks and then it gives us a rough area of where we'll potentially start buying, right? Uh, so, you know, when it comes down to an uptrend, those are some key things I want you guys to, you know, have in your mind when it comes down to uptrends and measured moves. A lot of people don't talk about this, uh, but this is one of the things that gained me the most success as, you know, the trader I am today. Um, then we have a downtrend. It's pretty much the same thing in reverse. You just need to know what these points are called. We got lower highs and lower lows, right? In a downtrend, you only want to take sells off lower highs, right? And, um, you know, if you can really break down and understand structure in the market, this is truly all you need to be a successful trader. You know, truthfully, it's just following the patterns and following the structure. In a downtrend, you only want to take selling positions off of lower highs. So you're only selling lower highs. That's the best optimal trade entries. And then we have a sideways market, right? Now, uh, we only trade in a trending market, right? So how do you know if you're in a trending market? It's either an uptrend or a downtrend. A sideways market is not a, a trend. Trend means in motion, in flow, in, in rhythm, in movement, right? Sideways market is sideways market. So when the market's actually going sideways, uh, you don't want to take any positions, right? And I'll explain why. Basic Forex education, once again, it's kind of a scam, right? Because, you know, it, they, they, there's, there's, there's a higher being or a higher a higher... There's, there, you know, there's the banks, there's the prime of prime banks. There's all these things we could talk about, but there's higher beings in this, in this, in these markets, right? And these higher beings put out information for people like us to blindly follow, so they can trap us and take our money in the market, right? So what you got to understand is basic forex education tells you, hey, there's resistance and there's support. There's a roof and a floor. Uh, you know, I wrote right here. It's kind of wishy-washy info because they're teaching you to sell up here and buy up here. I can't tell you guys how many times when I first started trading, you know, my mentor, my whatever, my, my, the person I was taking signals from said to buy the floor. I bought the floor and this thing just kept on going all the way down to hell. Right. And you know, when something like that happens, you start pulling your hair out, you know, you start praying to God. You're like, yo God, let me just get back to negative a hundred dollars. I'll close out my L and then, you know, you end up losing and blowing your accounts and stuff like that. Right. And uh, it's relatable. Maybe some of y'all have done that. It's, it's facts. You guys said, he said facts. It's facts. You know, it happens to all of us. And it's because we're, we don't have the correct information, right? So um, do not take trades in a sideways market. This is where market, uh, traders get trapped. You don't want to trade in this, right? And if you, you have an itch and you really got to trade in here and you're fiending to trade in this, lower your leverage, lower your risk. I'm going to teach you guys some crazy uh, risk management, uh, you know, techniques and understanding so you guys can always remain profitable when you're trading. But uh, you don't want to trade when it's sideways, right? 
the way to properly trade this is to wait for a breakout and you know uh, either buy that new higher low or sell that new lower high because at this point you're actually these are all equal equal uh, equal uh, lows and equal highs right you don't you're not into a trend until you start seeing price making new highs and new lows right um so the next big thing is identifying the shift of momentum shift of momentum is when the price changes directions or change of trend um, you might also say break of structure right um, so identify the shift of momentum when price changes directions it's a change of trend so example here we have an uptrend right you know it's going up it's making higher highs and higher lows you know it's it's flowing when it comes down to like order flow right so what i like to do is i like to like i like to leave myself notes on the charts how I do that is I just draw these little circles. You know, the colors don't matter, whatever makes you happy. But when I'm looking at price, if I see the markets at a higher high, right, I'm going to come back to the previous higher low. I'm going to circle it and then I'm going to put a horizontal ray, horizontal line beneath it. The reason why I do that is because this is the most important part in price, right? Um, and I'll explain why here in a second. So what's going to happen is this price goes from this higher low, it creates a higher high price should pull back and create a new higher low, which is fine, right? That's what it's supposed to do. But if price fails to make a higher high, that's my first indication that this might start shifting to a downtrend. Now this is a lower high, right? Now, what, what might happen is the price might come all the way down to this, this horizontal line, touch it, and then go all the way up and it's still an uptrend, right? But the moment that price goes below this area here, the moment it goes breaks below, this is now a downtrend. Price is going to pull back. When it pulls back, we're going to use all of our tools and our techniques to get an entry. And then this is how you catch those big fat swings. This is how you catch those three, four, 500 pip moves, right? Um, and then uh, when, when price uh, breaks the downtrend, how it works is very simple. The last lower high is the most important one. You're going to circle it. You're going to put your line. And when price goes back up above that area, that's when uh, the uptrend begins, right? And you buy the higher low and then it just starts going up. Now, the FIB is super key. Um, you know, here's the FIB settings. Take a moment, take a photo, write them down. Um, they'll continuously be on the screen. But, uh, you know, 0, 6, 1, 8, 71, 70, 6, 100, negative 27, negative 61, 8. So uh, the FIB rules, you only use FIBs in a trending market, uptrend or downtrend. Sideways market is not a trend, all right? Uh, in a downtrend, you pull the FIB from the lower high to the lower low. In an uptrend, you pull it in reverse, right? So in this example, we have a downtrend, right? Price is going down. So we pulled our FIB from the lower high down to the lower low. What the Fibonacci tool is designed to do is it's does it, think of it as like a, from here to here, it's like a start to finish, finish line, right? So what Fibonacci does is it measures this move and it tells you based on how far this move went, potentially the area price will pull back to, right? For you to get an entry. Now, one thing to keep in mind is, uh, is this, here's a, here's a strategy for, for you guys to swing. Like everything I'm teaching you guys right now, you could apply today and start making money with when the market opens. Um, so your entry area is a 61 to 71, eight area. So like this little box right here, right? You can put your stop 10 to 15 pips above the 78, six up there. And then your take profits are negative 27 and negative 61, eight, right? Now, what I want you guys to factor in is remember your measured moves. You know, Christopher Terry taught us this. He said, if this was 200 pips, he said nine times out of 10, this next one's also going to be about 200 pips, right? He said, he said, Justin, if this is 50 pips, he said nine times out of 10, the next one's also going to be about 50 pips. So what I do is I'll copy and paste these moves and then I'll plot them from the zero and look what happens. It lands in that 6171 area, our entry, and then it takes us all the way to our target. This is how the market really trends, right? When you start seeing the market trending, I know a lot of stuff hasn't been trending very well recently. I know a lot of things haven't been, um, I know a lot of things haven't been, um, I know a lot of things haven't been trending properly recently just because of, you know, all the coronavirus stuff, all the COVID stuff, all, all, all this, all this, you know, BS that's happening in the markets. But when the market is trending, this is a very simple strategy for you guys to come in and get really good trades, right? Now, this is where uh, you really want to focus in, right? Uh, the best risk to reward ratio is going to be at the 61, 71, 8 area, right? Now, the reason why we don't use the 38, 2 or the 50 is because of this. 
Um, you know, basic Forex education teaches you that, yo, if you ever trace them at the 38.2, it's going to be a, a quick reversal, right? They teach you, yo, if you ever revert, if it breaks the 38.2, it's going to go to the 50. It's going to be a slower reversal. They say, yo, if it breaks that and goes to 61.8, it's going to be even slower reversal. So us being, you know, basic traders, what are we doing? We want to make money now. We want to make money quick, right? Uh, you know, how many times have you guys sold the trade too early? You sell here, price stops you out. And then it, uh, it eventually goes in your favor and you're just like, damn, man, I should have waited. I should have been more patient. I, I should have, I should have chilled on it. Right. You know, so many times, um, we get in too early. Right. And then, you know, the trade goes against you. It goes against you a little bit more. You get scared, you get out of the trade, then it goes in your favor and you lose. Right. So you want to wait for the best possible entries, the best optimal entries. You need a trading plan. You need to have some type of, uh, some, some guidance, right? Real quick, before we get into, um, into the next part of the, the, the strategy, really what I want to go over is this. Uh, let's do this. Trading view. I'm just going to give you guys some real sauce right now. And this is how you can always remain profitable. Uh, let's do this. All right. And this is how you guys can always remain profitable. So here's like a little math lesson, right? Yo. Um, you know, on steady, what we focus on is percentage based risk reward percentage based R R you know, um, you know, we got over 400 people on this call right now. Um, truthfully guys, if you want to become a successful trader, um, successful traders, don't worry about the money that they're making or the pips they're catching. Right. Honestly, uh, when people tell me, Oh, they caught 2000 pips on this trade or, oh, I caught 400 pips this week, it doesn't impress me. And the reason why is because how much did you really make on that 400 pips, right? How are you optimizing the amount of pips you're catching? People really, what, what, you, gotta what you gotta change the focus on is most people focus on money, profits, slash the pips they're catching. You wanna shift the money and the pips to the, uh, the risk reward rate, the percentage based risk reward that you're catching. If you want to become an actual, like successful full-time trader, if you want to, uh, uh, if you want to talk about, we don't have to talk, we're not talking about the one minute chart. I'll break that down later on too. But, um, if you want to really become a successful trader, you got to talk about percentage based risk reward because yo, somebody can catch 400 pips and somebody, and somebody can catch 50 and you make way more money on the 50 than the 400. And the reason why is risk to reward, right? Risk to reward is, uh, you know, how much you're risking to potentially how much you're gaining, right? So let's factor this in. I'm gonna show you guys three different examples. Uh, here's three different risk to reward tools, right? So this shows us that we're risking 15 pips to make 15. So this is a one-to-one. -one. Let's say on this trade, it is a one to two. Let's say we're risking 15 pips. Let's do one to two, bet like right there. And then let's say this one is a one to three. Uh, now factor this in. Now this is a one to one right? One to one means whatever you're risking, whatever you're gaining, right? Let's say this is a one to two, right? Whatever you're risking, you're, you're making two times as much if you actually hit take profit. And let's say this is a one to three, right? One to three is the bare minimum you should ever be focused on. And uh, I'll explain why. So being in this foreign exchange market, being very realistic, most average traders getting started trading uh, you know, in the beginning part of your trading career, you're not going to have a very high accuracy rate as a trader. Right. And, and it is what it is. You know, if you're a basketball player, you might not hit all your shots in the beginning. Um, you know, if you're a baseball player, you might not hit, you might not, you might, you might be missing some swings. Right. But at the end of the day, if your risk to reward is, 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 if you can understand risk to reward in the way I'm about to explain it to you, you can always remain in profit. So let's say this, the average trader is a 30% accuracy trader, right? And that's just, that's not me saying that that's statistically speaking, right? Statistically speaking, the average trader just getting started, they're only going to have 30% accuracy, right? What does that mean? That means they win three trades and they're losing seven, right? They're losing seven. So out of 10, they win three, they lose seven, right? So factor this in. When we trade, I risk 1% on every trade I take right? 1% risk on every trade that I'm taking, right? One, uh, max three, but we're just going to focus on this 1% right now, right? 
So factor this in, guys. You as a trader coming into this, and like I kid you not, we get to I'm gonna show you guys the strategies on the charts and all that stuff. But if this doesn't click for you, this is the like yo, like no cap. This is the most important thing I'm gonna talk about. The risk to reward is so important because you could be a terrible accuracy trader. You could lose majority of your trades and you'll still always be in profit, right? So factor this in one for one. If I'm risking on a one uh, on a one one to one risk to reward trade, what's happening is I'm risking one percent to gain one percent. So on this example, my three wins, I'm up three percent, right? On my seven losses, I'm down seven percent, right? So my total ends up being negative 4% out of the 10 trades I just took if I'm trading out a one to one, right? Now let's say I'm trading out a one to two, I'm risking 1% to gain 2%, right? On my three wins, I'm making plus 6% return, right? On my seven losses, because I'm losing 1% each time, I'm losing 7% still. So my total is negative 1%, oops, negative 1%, right? So I'm still negative. Now, if you're doing a bare minimum one to three, you could be wrong 70% of the time, right? And you'll still be in profit because check this out. I'm risking 1% to gain 3%. So on my three wins, I gained 9%. I lost 7%. My total is positive 2%, right? So when you switch the the when, when you start focusing on percentage-based risk reward, this is when your accounts are really going to start growing. This is when you're really going to start making bread. And we're going to hop, just remember this, remember what we just went over. Um, because uh, exactly perspective, because eventually your trading is going to get better. You're going to go from this three out of 10 to eventually you're going to be a, a four out of 10 trader, right? Four wins, six losses, right? Factor this in. At this point, you know, being four for 10, uh, you know, you're, you're up, you'd be up 6% on your account after 10 trades, after winning four and losing six, right? So when it comes down to it, guys, it, it's not even about taking hundreds of trades. It's about taking trades that have very good risk to reward ratios. Yo, me personally, I don't take anything less than a one to seven to like a one to eight, right? So every time I'm taking a trade, I'm risking 1%. To make seven, or I'm risking two percent to gain fourteen, or I'm risking three percent of my account to gain twenty-one, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop back onto the little slides I have. Um, let me let me know if you guys are enjoying this so far. If you guys are enjoying this so far, go ahead and drop some twos. If you're learning something right now, um, go ahead and drop some twos in the chat. All right, perfect, 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 cool. Um, this is the stuff we teach on Steady, guys. Um, you know, we actually, uh, you know, we actually just updated the, uh, the back end of steady. Um, you know, we used to crash IM center every time we'd send out a trade. So, you know, they've been fixing it. We finally got a new, um, you know, back office for steady. It's working properly. It's been out for about a week now. So the, the influx of trades just start coming out. So, uh, we appreciate you guys being patient with us as well. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to combine, uh, our, our, uh, our, our strategies together, right? So let's factor this. So right now, what we're looking at is a downtrend, right? And what I like to do when it comes down to the downtrend is I don't look at the charts like candlesticks and all the extra stuff, right? Looking at that stuff is hard. Like looking at this is too much. When I look at the market, all I'm doing is I'm looking for the zigzags, right? I'm looking at the, the trend. So what I do is I circle the highs and the lows or the lower highs and the lower lows. See, it's easier to connect the dots than it is to look at all the stuff that's happening in the market, right? So what do we do? Once, once the market's at the lowest low, what I do is I come back up to the previous high, a lower high. I'm gonna change the color of that and I'm gonna put a horizontal line on it right here. The reason why I do that is I know if price goes above this line, it's now an uptrend. Now, uh, when it comes down to it, I already kind of drew this out, but I'll, I'll explain it again. So what ends up happening is this, price is in a downtrend, right? The moment that price comes up and breaks this last lower high, I know that price is no longer in a downtrend. So if price pushes up through it, I know it has to pull back before it goes higher, right? So what your job is to do, what, uh, what your job is to do is very simple. The last higher low, when price goes above this point, 
Um, the downtrend now shifts to an uptrend. Uh, and, and what we're gonna do now is very simple. You're gonna take the FIB tool from the low to the new high because we started an uptrending market. And now what's gonna happen is we're looking to take buying positions in the 6171 area and then the price swings up and then we take our profits, right? Now, when it comes down to it, on this trade, this is a trade, this is a trade uh, based on our old swing trading strategy. So everything I've taught you up till now, this was based on just understanding the trend and then using the FIB, right? This is a trade where we risked 42 pips and we made 188, which in my book, that used to be amazing. But this was only a one to four risk to reward ratio. That means if I risk 1%, I only gain 4% of my account. Whatever I'm risking, I'm gaining four times as much. Now, when it comes down to it, what we want to do is we want to uh, what we want to do is we want to take what we've already learned and we want to trade um, and we want to combine these institutional concepts um, and understanding liquidity and all these other things into um, into uh, into into the mix, right? So before we can move on, you guys got to understand this. You know, we we talk about Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant. Yo, I made up this thing called the trading cash flow quadrant, right? I've been saying on this call that basic Forex education is kind of a scam, right? And the reason why is this, um, you know, in Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant, he says 95% of the people make 5% of the money, 5% of people make 95% of the money. In the Forex market, we are the, the, uh, we are the big group, biggest group, right? When 95% of, uh, of the market participants are retail traders, that's what we're considered. We control less than 1% of the total market value, right? On the right-hand side of the quadrant, 5% of the market participants, it's the, it's the banks, it's the hedge funds, it's the liquidity providers, it's the higher entities above those people, right? Um, and if you're into conspiracy theories and stuff like that, you know, all that stuff. But it's, it's the banks, the hedge funds, and liquidity providers, right? These people control 95, they control 99% of the market, but it's only run by 5%. So check this out. Basic Forex education teaches you how to trade on this side of the, the quadrant, right? It teaches you how to trade over here, right? But yo, why would we want to trade on this side when we know there's, uh, there's, 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 there's different entities on this side which are controlling and manipulating the market? You got just, just think with me for a second, right? You know, basic Forex education is, is put out there into the world and we blindly follow it, right? Now, when we blindly follow this stuff, you gotta, you gotta ask yourself, who put this information out there? It's the banks, the hedge funds, and the liquidity providers. Because what they do is they're trading on the other side of your positions and they're pretty much taking your money and leveraging that on their, uh, their positions. And I'll break that down a little bit more as we continue. But uh, hopefully, this is, um, hopefully this is making sense. And like I said, this is, um, this is, this is what we teach on Steady. So here's some concepts that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the volume range candle or the point of interest candle, uh, imbalances in price and mitigation, right? So a uh, volume range candle is simply a buy to sell or sell to buy candle, right? Uh, imbalance is a void between wicks, and I'll explain what that is. And mitigation is pretty much the act of price coming back to previous point of interest and volume range candles. So I'm going to break this down to you guys, right? Um, and I don't know, I don't, yeah, Riyadh, are you there, bro? I don't know how much time I have. I don't want to, uh, I'm not trying to run over anything either. Like, are we good, bro? Pretty good, bro. You closing us out, man. So you got, All right, cool. I won't take too much longer then, but I, I will finish. Uh, so peep this guys. Uh, so here's an example, right? So yo, this, this, this is the same trade. What I want you guys to understand is what we're about to look at is this is the same pair that we're about to look at, but just in a different perspective of understanding the market, right? So um, liquidity is built up above previous highs and below previous lows, right? Yo, what I want you guys to understand is liquidity, all it is, is it's people's money. It's your stop loss, it's your stop losses and buy stops and sell stops, right? So check this out. Basic Forex education teaches us, hey, when you see double tops in the market, once price comes back up to this shoulder, we want to sell, right? And they tell you, hey, sell the, sell the shoulder, right? They say, hey, sell the M shapes, right? Uh, cool. So they say sell. So what happens is, um, yo, guys, I, I see some of y'all are asking for the slides. If you go on to, um, if, you guys, uh, if you guys plug into Steady, everything's already plugged in there. So you can get access to all of that there. Um, so check this out. 
basic forex education is going to say, hey, this is kind of looking like an M, right? What they're going to tell us is this. Once price comes back up into uh, this area right here, once price comes up in here, we should try to sell again, right? So what happens is liquidity is built up. Above every high and below every low, there is some form of liquidity, which means uh, people's pending orders, people's stop losses, it's, it's money, right? So what happens is this, guys. Let me just delete some of these uh, drawings that I had previously on here. So what a volume range candle is, it's where they pump the market to gather liquidity above previous highs, right? So factor this in, guys. So the bank is the one that teaches you this. They say, hey, when you see a double top, put your stop losses above the highs, right? How many times have you guys heard when, whenever you've been learning about double top strategies, um, you know, people always tell you, hey, just put your stop above the high. You know, basic Forex education always tells us this, put the stops above the high, right? No matter what strategy it is, no matter what we're doing, uh, people say put the stops above the high, right? Now, what happens is the bank is the one telling you to put your, your stops above the high and you're blindly following us. So factor this in. In this area right here, there's all this money. There's all this liquidity, right? Liquidity just means people's money, their stop loss. So in this area right here, there's money, right? There's money sitting here just for the taking. What the bank is going to do is right here in this candle that we've highlighted, this, this bullish candle that we've highlighted in purple, uh, they're going to, theoretically, they're going to, in this blue line, they're going to pump the market. They're going to enter the market with millions and millions of lot sizes. You know, we, we think a 10 lot is big, or you see people dropping like a 50 lot. Think about a million lots. What they're doing is they're theoretically pumping up the market, right, to grab the liquidity. So this is really what they're doing. Well, let me zoom back in. Uh, so what they're doing is, yo, we know that there's money trapped here. What they're going to do is they're going to pump this up because people are selling right here as well. So factor that in. The bank has a different way of looking at, at, at the market. So we, we know that above this previous high over here, there's liquidity. What they're really doing is they pump the market up with hundreds of millions of dollars to uh, induce your stop losses, right? To hit your stops. And then what they're going to do is they're going to take the money from here and they're going to pump that into their next cell that's about to come into place, right? So they pump the market to gather liquidity above previous highs. So they buy the market. So they buy once they gather liquidity. So once they take your money from here and they put it into this next trade, what they're going to do is they're going to sell, right? So they buy to sell, right? So remember that. On Steady, we talk about buy to sell candles a lot. Buy to then sell. Once they have gathered liquidity, triggered the stop orders, they sell, right? What I want you guys to understand is banks, have banks, hedge funds, and liquidity providers, they have unlimited equity. Unlimited equity means they have to hedge their positions to enter the market. And what that means is this. Uh, I already said it, but buy to sell means they hedge. They have to hold both positions. The reason they don't take profit on the buy is because they need the buy pressure and the sell pressure for order flow. Really what that means is they're buying millions and millions of lots here. So let's say they bought 2 million lots here at the open of this candle. Once they take out all the stop losses over here, they're going to sell maybe 10 million lots here, right? They don't take profit on the buy because they need the equal pressure in the market so the market just doesn't go spiking randomly. Like legally, they have to move the market a certain way. So they have to hedge their positions. So here's an example of a bank and a liquidity provider not hedging their position. This is a GBP AUD on the daily chart on Oanda. This is a 2,200 pip spike in one minute. Um, and this would ma mess up the natural order flow of the market. And what I mean by that is the way the market naturally moves, right? The way the, the, the market naturally moves. So if the market was just spiking 2,000 pips every day randomly because the bank is just, if they just buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell at, 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 their, at their pleasure, if they put in millions and millions and millions of lots of, of orders, they're going to move the market, right? So the way they move their market is with these buy to sell, sell to buy, and these hedging candles, right? And this is something we'll teach more in depth on, on Steady. But um, so that was example one was this volume range candle over here. We'll come back to that later on right the next thing we're going to talk about is imbalances so imbalances this is when price is very vertical right um so check this out you know we trade with we trade with b book brokers and all, all these you know unregulated brokers and all the extra stuff which you know, there's nothing wrong with but the real the way the real forex market works is if somebody is buying somebody on the other hand has to be selling if i'm winning somebody else has to be losing does that make sense so 
what happens is sometimes price is only offered in one direction. When price is very, uh, when price is only is very vertical or, uh, you know, it's, it's only going in one direction very quickly. Um, uh, what we have to realize is there's no sales being offered in this price, right? So in this area, what we did is we looked for the last wick up and the next wick down. So in this area, this was the last wick up. And then from there, there was no wick down. Notice this candle had no wick down. So it was one, two, and then this third candle had a wick down. So this is our area of imbalance, right? Now, what you guys have to understand is there's, so, and this is, this is, this is getting into finance, right? So there's a premium price and there's a discounted price, right? Um, and, and there's equilibrium, right? I don't know if any of you have ever studied um, just, just even basic economics, but yo, there's a premium price and there's a, a, a discount price and then there's an equilibrium. What you guys have to understand is that when these banks are entering the market here, let's say Bank of, market, uh, Bank of America put a million lots there. Let's say JP Morgan put a thousand lots there. Let's say, let's say uh, Navy Federal, whatever bank you use has lots there. There's money trapped all throughout this area. So what we do is we highlight this area, we put a fib on this area, and we're looking at the 50% of this area. 50% is equilibrium, right? And equilibrium just means the equal point, the center, um, the median, the middle, right? It's the rough average. You know, if there's money stuck down here and there's money stuck down here, more than likely they're going to try to come into the, the middle because they could at least, you know, take out the rough average. And that's like the, the best way I can dumb this down. Hopefully that makes sense. But what happens is this, we look for areas like this and these are not only targets, but entries as well. So we take a position off the 50% of the imbalance area. Now we zoom out and see what happens. Yeah. So now we're going to zoom out and look what happens. Here was our imbalance, right? Right there. There was that equilibrium and look what hit. Boom. Right there. Perfect entry. Now we have, now we can have a better risk to reward ratio on the same setup from our swing trading style. Now we'll combine the two ideas, right? This is how we get perfect sniper entries, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to combine this with this and then we're going to, we're going to see what's good. So when we combine this, now factor this in. Now our trade is a one to 10 risk to reward ratio, right? Now I'm only risking 14 pips to gain 140. So put this in perspective, guys. You know, a lot of people, all they focus on is the pips and this and that, and that's cool. But I'm talking about percentages, right? Yo, think about this. I'm risking 1% of my account to gain 10,000, uh, not 10, uh, I'm risking 1% of my account to gain 10% of my account. So I'm risking $1,000 on my account and I'm making $10,000 on my account. Or I'm risking $2,000 on my account and I'm making $20,000 on my account. Or I'm risking $3,000 on my account and I'm making $30,000 on my account, right? But I'm talking about money because that's what, that's what interests most people. But really, I'm risking 1% to gain 10, I'm risking 2% to gain 20, or I'm risking 3% to gain 30, right? So like I told you guys, you know, long-term success, like, yo, the people, you know, traders at the bank, traders at the hedge funds, traders that manage money, they don't give a damn about how many pips you caught or how many pips I caught or how many pips this move was. All they care about is the risk to reward that they're, the market is presenting them in that certain move, right? So I showed you guys a trade that was a one to four. We took it to one to 10. Um, yeah, guys, you know, uh, I would say, you know, this is just a little taste of the value that you can get on, on, um, on steady right now. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is mitigation. Uh, remember this candle. We said this was our hedging candle. This was our buy to sell candle. Now this sell made us millions of dollars of profit, right? But this buy they had was in millions of dollars with a drawdown. What happens is once the bank takes profit on this short, or once they take profit on the sell down here, the buying pressure from up above, it pulls the market back up like a rubber band or a magnet. Now notice this, right at the open of this candle is right where price reacted right back to. So what we call this is mitigation, pretty much to, to means to break even or take a small loss for the bank. But this is truthfully where we're getting in because factor this in, once we come back to this area, they're closing these buy positions at break even or small profit. And when they take off that buying pressure, the selling pressure is gonna take us back down. 
and then we get another opportunity. All these trades I just showed you guys are trades that we sent on Steady uh, since the launch of Steady. Um, so here's a one to seven, right? Whatever you're risking, you're making seven times as much. You risk 3%, for example, you would have gained 21%, right? So here's the, this last example that I'm gonna do. Um, so in this example, here's two trades, right? Um, the number one, this is a steady trade, right? So this, let's say this is one of our steady students. Um, let's just say this is a, a different a other type of trader, right? Somebody else, other, right? So we got the same entry, the same take profit, but because we know how to enter the market and scale in and snipe these entries, we have different stop losses. Your stop loss isn't a bad thing. It's actually your leveraging capability, right? Because, yo, I can risk $50 on this stop loss and I can risk $50 on this stop loss, but because the, 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 the space that I'm covering is smaller, I can use a bigger lot. And hopefully that makes sense. But factor this in. So let's say we have a $200 account, something super humble, something most people are going to start with. Let's say we're risking 3% on our account. 3% of $200 is $6. So let's say we're risking $6 on both of these trades. On this one, to risk $6, I'm using a 0. Uh, 0 0.01, right? Uh, I'm making 12 cents per pip. On this trade, because it's a six pip stop loss, I'm using a 0. 0.1 lot. Means I make $1 per pip. On this first trade, I risk 3%, my $6, I made $24, which is 12% gain, right? Which honestly, you know, it's respectable. Yo, I risk 3%, I gain 12, solid, right? But yo, on the other hand, check this out. I risk the same 3%, the same $6, I made $200, I made 100% growth, right? Without having to over leverage. So factor this in, this trade was a one to four. This trade was a one to 32, right? Yo, one of my best trades I've taken is a one to 74 risk to reward, right? So factor this in, yo, whatever you're risking, you're making 32 times as much. Is this happening every day? It can. I saw somebody was making fun of the one minute time frame earlier. Yo, the reason why I get these type of entries and these types of trades is because I find this on the higher time frame and then I go to the lower time frames and I find the entries, right? Um, but uh, you know, there's so many different examples. Uh, but that's kind of the end of the presentation. Um, give me a sec. I'm just going to check this. Uh, yeah, guys, I would say the best thing you guys can do is um, tap in, right? If you guys log into im.academy, hop into the, uh, the, the shopping cart, um, add Steady. Steady is $22 a month, right? And um, uh, Steady is $22 a month. And I promise you, one TP will cover the 22 for several months, maybe even the year, right? Uh, but with that being said, um, let me see if there's anything else I really wanted to talk about real quick. Uh, honestly, I think I think we went over a lot. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, you know, flood it or you know, go overboard. But um, I hope you guys got some value out of this. Uh, I appreciate your guys' time. Um, definitely plug in. You know, this was just a little taste of what we're offering. But truthfully, guys, Steady's not even about the trades or the trade ideas, you know, that's just a little part of it. Steady is truthfully about the go live sessions, um, the previous recordings and all of the, the education. Because our goal isn't to, you know, truthfully guys, you know, we're in this company and we're in this company to, to you know, first, uh, you know, learn how to trade and, you know, second to build our organizations, right? Um, I truly believe you could build a successful organization just teaching people through, you know, what we're doing on Steady, right? Because what we're teaching people is we're teaching people how to, over leverage their accounts without having to risk more than one to 2% per trade, right? We're teaching people how to, you know, you know, really become successful traders, long-term traders as well. And, uh, you know, really the, the smart way uh, uh, of doing things. With that being said, uh, Riyadh, bro, if there, is, is there anything else that you'd like me to talk about, bro? Our boy, man. I think you're good to go, bro. I think All right, man. Well, yo, I appreciate you, bro. I had a lot of fun. Thank you guys for, uh, for having me. Lit. Yo, let's drop some fire in the chat box for Starboy, the GOAT. And you can follow his IG. He dropped his IG, Supreme Signy. Um, I believe somebody put it in the chat. Definitely give him a follow. Definitely show him some love on the IG. And, guys, I think it's a, I think this call was great. I think this was an amazing call. I think it was put together perfectly. I don't know how the lineup came to be, how the lineup was, but it worked out perfectly. Brittany Burrell, Abel, Gustavo, Starboy, everybody did an amazing job. Um, and then we'll have Chris Derrick again, maybe this week coming up or next week, he's going to do a, a special call for us. 
um, since he couldn't do it today. But, man, we just learned a lot. I mean, what Starboy just broke down, family? Listen, stuff I never heard before. Stuff, stuff I've never heard before about trading. And it just makes you look at trading from a different lens and it allows you to see that you're really in the big dog game. This is not um, some type of small stuff. This is the big game. And, and if you learn how to play in this game the right way, you can make a lot of money just like he has been able to do in a lot of other, a lot of other educators. And again, family, take the information and go out there and apply it. No knowledge is yours until you apply it. You can't say, I know this until you actually do this. So I have to take what you learn, guys, and, and go out there and put it into action because that is what creates um, the results. But like we talked about at the beginning of the call before the trainers came up, it goes back to your belief system. It goes back to what you really believe that you can do in the market because tr trading is truly 90% mindset, 10% skill set, right? So it's all about how you see the markets, how you analyze everything, um, and, and, and your belief system and the goals that you create um, for yourself. So, guys, I'm excited. It's been an amazing call. Like I always say, I'm not here to overcook the grits. The whole call was recorded. So I'm about to um, let it, let it uh, you know, process and do all that. And I'll make sure I drop it in the chats so everybody can have it. Um, but definitely be on the lookout uh, for the call with Chris Derrick coming up uh, so he can give us the game that he wanted to give today. Um, but let's have an amazing week. I love you all. See y'all at the bank. Starboy, again, we appreciate you, my brother. You guys have a good evening.